welcome back to Britain, Jacob, the movies, and welcome back to our Spookathon. I am Jacob. And I'm Britain. And uh, to continue our Spookathon, we're going to be talking about an, yet another Wes Craven movie. Uh, <clears throat> yesterday we talked about Scream. That was a lot of fun. Now we're going to be talking about one of the best slashers and one of the greatest horror films of all time, one of the most iconic horror slash, slash slasher films of all time, A Nightmare on Elm Street. But Woo! we're not alone because... We are unofficial third member back on here yet again. Carlton Bacon, how are you doing? Hi there, folks. I'm doing pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, you're like a you're a super fan of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Oh, yeah, that's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> like this and like Halloween and uh, I think Friday the Thirteenth as well. You were like, bruh, I live for that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I asked, I asked him to come on for Scream, and he's like, nah, I'd rather talk about, like, Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm like, all right, that's fair. So, now we got him on for Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> it's, funny when I, it's funny when I asked Carlton. It's like he already knew. It's like, we're going to be talking about Freddy, aren't we? I was like, you guessed right. <laughs> Something just told me, if I felt it in my bones, I'm like, we're talking about Fred. Yeah. It's like, damn right we are. But, uh, yeah, we're talking about Nightmare on Elm Street today, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to be talking about this iconic movie called Nightmare on Elm Street, starring Heather Leggenkamp, I think is how you pronounce it. Camp. Camp, thank you. Uh, she's also in the new Midnight Club show, which I'm, I'm thinking of finishing today, the season anyway. Yeah, I texted Carlton. I'm like, is this the chick from uh, La uh, Nightmare on Elm Street? And he's like, yeah, it is. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you looked familiar. And hey, you know what's funny? When you had uh, shown me the picture of her from the show, I had just seen maybe a day before her talking about it. I'm like, oh, I didn't know she You're not about Freddy because they're asking her, you know, would you ever do, you know, like a, a Freddy the way that they've been doing the Halloween trilogy? She said, yeah, I'm, I'm open to it. And then they were talking about it. The day later, you showed me, I'm like, your timing is just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess so, because I was like, I'm like, I looked, I saw her, I'm like, Carlton would know this, because he loves these movies, so. It was either this or Halloween, so we went with Nightmare. Um, or, or Candyman. I, I really enjoy Candyman as well. Underrated I wanna, as hell. I've been watching Candyman all week. I want to, I actually want to re, I want to rewatch that movie because uh, I haven't seen it in a while. I haven't seen this one in a while. I was going to, and then I'm like, shit, it was on Max the whole time? Fuck. Oh, so. Yeah. Yeah. I have <laughs> Candyman. I have, well, I have the, the original one and I have the one that came out last year. I heard the, I heard the new one was actually not bad. It was okay. It could have been better, but it wasn't horrible. I was just glad that, you know, the female director that did it, you know, got success for it. So I was happy that there was something to look forward to. I still need to see it. Kind yeah. of scared, too. Uh, well, yeah. Oh, real quick before we get into Freddy, let me tell you a, a very embarrassing story about my first time watching Handman when I was seven. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. So my parents were, were, they weren't divorced, but they were split up at this point. So I was at, on, it was the weekend, I was at my dad's house. Freight, dad puts on Freight, uh, Candyman. And I'm like, okay, I'll watch it. Because at that point, I was starting to get into more mature movies anyways. We get to the bathroom scene where the boy's, you know, schlong is cut off and put into the toilet. Oh, God. Now, yeah. at, when I saw that part, I freaked out. Because by that point, it didn't dawn on me that kids could get hurt in movies or kids could even die. That concept freaked me out so much, I, I ran out of the room and I couldn't watch it more. <laughs> in school, the entire week, I'm afraid to go to the bathroom by myself because I think I'm hearing Candyman's voice echo in the bathroom. Teachers thought my parents were abusing me somehow. So they called my mom up and said what's going on. I tell her what happened. She's like, wait, your father made you watch Candyman? I said, yeah. On the spot, she called my dad. She cussed his ass out. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing 
Let me see that goddamn movie. What the fuck can happen? Motherfucker, when did you ever think about anything? You dumb mother F this, F this. Jeez. I see you again. Let's save the children by angrily swearing in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, fast forward to me at age 12. Now, I can by this point, I've gotten into the habit of knowing about behind-the-scenes stuff, and my, the filmmaker in me is, is you know, really starting to go up and get up there. The Candyman is about to come on. It's the weekend. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, do I want to give this another try after not seeing it for years? I said, fuck it. I watch it. I'm like, that wasn't bad. I wa- It came on right after again. I watched it. Now, every time Candyman comes on, I gotta watch it. But the movie, that was the f- one and only horror movie that made me so scared I couldn't pee by myself. And I mean that literally. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember Halloween 4. I, or I think it was Halloween 4. Like, Michael was heading up the stairs. My dad's like, let, let's just watch just for, you know, giggles. And he's like slowly coming up the stairs, and this dude's just fumbling with a shotgun. And for some reason. That frightened me out of all things. I can picture the scene. I know exactly what what you're talking about. I was just like I was I was for some I guess I was just too young. I don't know. He wasn't even doing anything. He was just creeping up the creeping up the staircase. I'm like, oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, with a shotgun that he never fires. Yeah. Like some horror movies, right? I think I think he like grabs him and then like throws him out the window or something. It was you know. Standard Michael Fair. <laughs> uh, no, I think he snapped his neck in that one. Because, you know, Michael's got super strength for some reason. Yeah, no. that's, the weird, that's the weird thing. He's always, he's always got super strength for some reason. Somehow Mace has survived everything. Yeah. Oh, they, he's supposed to be dead already, but... My, my favorite fake-out is that when Lori cuts off his head in... Uh, age 20, but then it turns out it was just some guy wearing the mask. <laughs> that, I'm not going, that kind of pissed me off. That so back stupid. Back. <laughs> like, that's, what made, that's what made Jiggly say, you know what, just kill me. Fuck this. <laughs> this is so... Oh, yeah. But, you know, what are you going to do? Um, but Nightmare on Elm Street. A lot of fun. I remember being spooked out by this movie as well when I was younger because despite my precociousness, um, I was still a kid who got frightened by special effects. I mean, uh, I mean, I was traumatized by the thing of all of all movies, but um, uh, which Carlton loves to torment me about relentlessly. But um, yeah, I remember me and my grandma, out of all people, my grandma hates horror movies, and she's like. We we could watch the we could watch the trailer for Nightmare on Elm Street. I, I won't I won't be scared. And it was the scene where the chick is up on the wall and she's just like flying around. Like I don't know why that creeped me out. It was just ooh, you know. <laughs> oh, I've been watching people react to it for the first time on YouTube. Everyone gets freaked out on that scene, and I just I don't know why. I'm probably sadistic, enjoying them being freaked out by it. <laughs> I'm like, hey, 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 pussies. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, pussies. I sat through this when I was seven, or whatever, I don't know. But pretty much. And it's funny, I got into Freddy right after my issue with Candyman, ironically. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's a, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street is a really fun concept. It's a, a killer that kills you in your dreams. That's weird. Let's see what they can run with it. I think they did a pretty good job with what they did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially, especially when you realize that it comes from a lot of Robert, uh, not Robert, Wes Craven's personal uh, things that he was dealing with in his life. So I think, for me, I think that's what makes it even more special. When you can take something from your real life and turn it into something creatively, nine times out of ten, those are the stories that end up being the most unique yeah, we get one of the most brilliant and unique concepts is the idea of not being able to fall asleep because people view sleep as this very comforting thing. Like, oh, I'm going to fall asleep. I'll uh, gotta take a quick nap and I'll wake up and I'll feel fresh and all that. But if you're denied that very basic thing that we all require, it becomes very psychological. 
And mm. I think that's where A Nightmare on Elm Street stands out from any other slasher flick. De- definitely. And then when you realize you have to sleep, that's what I think would mess with me the most. You're That's going to be one of those things where if you've gone like a week or however long without sleeping, eventually your body is going to get to a point where it's going to do it. So it's not a matter of am I going to fall asleep, it's when. So yep. that type of fear, that type of paranoia, that's something that I think everyone can get behind. And when you have a common fear, especially for a horror movie, it's easy for people to click with. And I think the producer, Robert Shea, I think that's why he he put so much faith into the movie when Wes was talking to him about it, because he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I see it, because I, I have, I, you have dream, dreams, I have nightmares, you have nightmares, we all have that. When you have something that people can relate to in horror movies, generally that helps with, you know, selling it. So yeah, they, makes, I think they knew then that they had something special. Yeah, and it makes the film even more terrifying, because like, if you even doze off, Freddy's come for you. <laughs> you flopped either way. You're like, hey, I'll close my eyes, doze off. Yeah, you're already, you're technically asleep. You're so mine, I'm bitch. You. <laughs> as as Freddy would probably say. <laughs> Freddy he would say that. Oh, <laughs> bitch, exactly <laughs> like that. You're mine, bitch. Like, look, okay, I can be yours, but you really gotta call me a bitch, Freddy. You talk too much shit to be a man to be coming to my dreams. <laughs> What, what, what you in the real world, bitch? Isn't that what they do in this movie? She's like, we're gonna trick him into coming in the real world, and then, you know, we'll see what happens yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. And I was amazed by it when I was watching the YouTubers react to this. I was amazed at how so many people didn't get that, or they couldn't understand that that's the whole idea was you don't know if you're asleep or not. That's why these characters are doing some things that are a little weird. Even though I'm looking at it realistically, I'm like, look, dream or not, if I see a bitch with a sweater with her bloody nose in the hallway telling me where's my past, I should. Yeah, I should consider running for my life. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> up your ass. Um, before, I mean, um, before we do get into this, I, I wanted to know what you guys thought of the remake of this movie. With uh, Jackie we don't Earl. Talk about that shit here. We oh. don't talk about it here. <laughs> we don't talk about it here. I couldn't even get a word in before Jacob said that shit. <laughs> Just that's it. <laughs> okay, look, I'll say this. I'll say I'll say only this. It, it could have been so much better, but if you had told me to find one thing about it that was good, Jackie Earl Haley. I agree. He was fantastic. Yeah, at least say, at least say that. Jackie, the only reason to tolerate it. Yeah, Jackie was good. He was good. The the glove design could have been better. The makeup design could have been better. The things that they did could have been better. They 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 cheat. They cheated things that they didn't need to cheat in the movie, and it it shows. Plus, you had a lot of CW like actors in it that kind of just took you out of it. Yeah, that too. Like I was like, okay, you got the boy, you got Clancy Brown in here. That's a plus, but you don't really do much with him. I mean, hey, when you don't have Robert Unglund, Jackie Earl Haley's a good choice too. But uh, yeah, movie's pretty bad. It was so bad apparently that one of the actresses uh, almost quit acting because of it. Cool, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I know which one it was too. I think it was either Kate Mora who played Nancy, or it was. Um, Oh, I can't remember her name. She's in Arrow. She was the first one that dies in the movie. Katie something. Oh, um, Laurel? From... Yeah, she plays Laurel. Matter of fact, she played Arrow two years after this movie came out. Damn, I can't remember her name. I normally can't remember, but her. Yeah. And I remember when I watched this, like, I was watching her, I'm like, oh... You're from that shitty, and I said out loud, you're from that shitty uh, nightmare movie. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, at least it got you with something good now, because when it first started, it started off strong, so I was like, thank God, she's not in something shitty now. Um, but okay, the less said about that movie, the better. I mean, I, there's a lot of things I do like about this movie. Um, I mean, one, obviously, Robert Unglund as uh, Freddy. Now, yeah, he did get a little more hammy as, as the movies went along, but I like that he's actually threatening in this, while still having a lot of fun with the role, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
I love how he just pops up and just chases her around. And but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, uh, a lot of great shots in this movie, like the creepy red door, the girls playing the jump rope, the nursery rhyme, really creepy stuff. Yeah, especially with all that they had to do in a short amount of time, it just makes me appreciate practical filmmaking even more which me and Jacob we can do a whole video literally about how we like practical make uh, makeup practical effects versus what they usually rely on CGI these days just on that alone I yeah, mean I, re- I remember complaining to Carlton about the MCU Spidey like they just like make his suits essentially CGI I went on a rant to him about it so yeah I really appreciate practical effects yeah Especially when you realize, oh, wait, after, what was it, Iron Man 3, pretty much only thing that they did with Iron Man suits, they gave him, like, this little vest thingy that looks like a bit of armor, and then the rest of it is just CGI. I'm like, bruh, yeah, you're not that bad on the budget where you couldn't do his whole suit practical like he did the first three solo Iron Man movies. Come on, my dudes. Um, That's a rant for another day. I mean, I, I mean, there is a... um. I will say, uh, I don't think, in terms of practical effects, nothing beats the thing. I will die on that hill. Um, but uh, Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street has pretty damn good practical effects, too. So I would say it's on the same, it's on the same par. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, on the, it's, on, it's on the same par of effects. It's on the same par of creativity and how they thought to execute it. Because this is those two films are the ones you got to go... Like, someone actually had to sit and think about how they were going to have a spider head with eyeballs. Yeah, I know. And, and then they got, someone has to be drugged up, ass naked, on a wall, like Fred Astaire, screaming on top of her lungs. I, I know, this is a very creative film, because it's like, you know, it, it, it's it's a really, it's just a really creepy idea for a movie. You're like, oh, you're gonna sleep? Nope. <laughs> this crazy guy with... A gloved hand of knives is gonna come and kill you. It was there the whole time. It's like, the other thing I also love about this okay. film is the soundtrack. Oh yeah. oh yeah. We also get a young Johnny Depp in this. Uh, his first breakout role. Yeah. Um, Johnny. One of one, one of my favorite actors of all time, Johnny Depp. Yeah, a lot of people didn't realize this was his first. I'm like. Well, I, I gotta admit, even though I've seen this a thousand times, I forgot. Yeah, this was his first. I I don't know if this was his like first first, but I think this was his breakout role. It was his it? first, yeah. Oh, it was because right. he, he he came to L A to be a musician, but he he a friend I think told him about this and he auditioned and he was like, all right, sure, I'll try it. But he got it most because Wes Craven's like daughters at the time they're like teenagers. They saw like a photo like a headshot of him or whatever, and they wanted him to pick him just because he was cute. But he ended up being good, too. <laughs> Luckily, he can act as well. <laughs> right. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Heather Leggin... Uh, God damn it. What's her fucking name? It's like, it's like Baby Driver all over again. I'm gonna get her name wrong. Link, Lincoln Camp. Link, Lincoln Camp. Thank you. There you go. She, uh, she plays Nancy. She's very good in this. Um, but my blurb thoughts is very well done slasher movie and a very unique twist on the idea of a slasher movie. And I did on dreams, which I don't think I'll ever look at dreams the same way again because of this film. Yeah, I know. Did, did you ever have that one point where you were just kind of like, just like you couldn't sleep because of this movie? Because of this? No. Oh. <laughs> but, but, I understood, <laughs> but I understood everyone else's, uh, issue with it, or, you know, like, I can't sleep after this because I think Freddy's gonna come out. I think I was geeking out over his concept too much that Freddy was never scary to me. You know what? That cool. That's fair, man. He was always cool, he was always interesting, and he kept my interest to the point where I was mad that he lost in Freddy versus Jason. But the kid in me didn't understand story-wise, it made sense for him to lose. I just knew that, look, the one I thought was cooler lost. F this movie. <laughs> Funny thing, this is actually where I first discovered Freddy Krueger as a villain. Because I actually didn't see uh, the first Nightmare on Elm Street as a kid. I saw it as an adult. 
first uh, time I was introduced to Freddy, and actually Jason Voorhees was Freddy versus Jason. Oh, wow. That's not a bad intro, though. No. Uh, I, it's one of my favorite Guilty Pleasure movies. Not sorry. Like, I saw Freddy vs. Jason in theaters. It, that, that's a fun one. I love at the end, he gets up, he, he like, gets out of the water, and then there's Freddy, and he just fucking winks at the camera. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Why? Uh, I was like, bro, that's what made me think it was going to be the second one. And I was like, well, no, I guess not. I guess we'll just have to enjoy it as a rare gem. But then yeah. again, do you really want to follow up to that? Or you, I feel like a follow up will kind of just ruin it. This just needs to be sacred as a one off. Yep, it stands out on its own. It's a gem that we can all savor. Right, because you don't want a AVP Requiem situation. Oh, yeah, God. Oh. I, mean, I like that movie, but that one, y'all can, you can tell. They didn't really have a plan. They just said, just, I don't know, here, get it out. Mm-hmm. The Predator was the only thing about that that was cool. Everything else was just, I, the fuck. The less said about AVP Requiem, the better. <laughs> and the less said about the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, the better. Damn. We need to do our own know, movies we hate. <laughs> <laughs> That's one I just want to bash on. Just like a fan force did. Nightmare on Elm Street remake. See, we're fine. See, you said don't mention movies, then you gotta mention that one of all ones. <laughs> Well, I had to, because I'm going to talk about it here. One, well, rant about it on here one day. So, See, so when I bring up Herbie Goblin, don't be mad. Fuck you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, my polar thoughts on Nightmare on Elm Street is that it's a fantastic movie. And um, very good. Really enjoyed this film. Not really much else to say, aside from that. Alright, but yeah, uh, we want to get into how the movie starts, and all the cool stuff that happens in it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I, that, that sounds bad. Uh, yes, I do want to get into that. That would be nice. Damn, Jacob, he gave Sinister a, a one star? God damn. Quit stalking my letterbox. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to find <laughs> movies. <laughs> I'm trying to find, trying to find movies we've both seen. Anyway. Are you that obsessed over me? Like, <laughs> You shush your mouth. Um, a boner for me for some reason. Um, yeah. Alright, so this movie starts with, our, with a friend... Not a friend. That what, I'm, what am I, Mr. Rogers? Uh, so teen, it starts with this woman, this teenager called Tina Gray, who's awakened from this terrifying nightmare where a mysterious disfigured man wearing a blade-fixed glove attacks her in a boiler room. Which, you know, you know what that means. What do you guys think of this? Yeah, I'll let you guys take it over from here, because... Uh, you guys saw it more recently than I did. <laughs> so. mm-hmm. And like I said, it's imprinted into my brain waves. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, the shot where Freddy <clears throat> opens up Freddy in the boiler room, making his iconic glove. Uh, and then the whole... I, I, what I love about it is that it was said once, and now it's all it's how I see it every time that the actress who played her, I think her real name was Amanda something, she said that she liked it because it gave her Janet Lee vibe where, like, from Psycho, you think that's going to be the protagonist. Mm-hmm. But then it does, a, it does a twist early in the movie and someone else actually is the protagonist. <clears throat> so I think, I, so now, because of that, I always see it that way. It kind of gives me that uh, Psycho tradition in a way. Yeah, he really, you know, Wes Craven really likes that trope, because <laughs> it happened as well in Scream. Oh, yeah, with uh, Drew Barrymore? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, I like that. I liked how... I don't, the one thing I have to say about this movie that I don't think a lot of people say this either, they did really good at not showing too much of Freddy. They showed him when they needed to, but most of the time they kept him perfectly lit and let you your imagination go crazy on his 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 burn makeup 
never known exactly pinpointing how he looks because the, the shading or the light was on him the way it was glistering off his face he, he could look different different ways in different shots and still look terrifying <clears throat> yeah i love that, that that he's not treated like spectacle like oh here's there's this, there's not like this big reveal like here's what frank krueger looks like a guy with very burnt skin with a christmas sweater and a razor blade for hands but nope it's like here's freddy bitch you know <laughs> <laughs> referencing another movie horror movie mm. ow so so there's that and then, oh here, here's the first fun fact you said the Christmas sweater. You know why they went with red and green for the stripe? Why is that? Because those are the two colors that the human eye has the hardest time putting together. And when it comes to sleep, that it, 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 it factors into the whole sleeping thing and the whole your the way your eye views it. Like it's like the eye tries to put those colors together. It gets like kind of like uh, meshed. Mm-hmm. Which is like symbolic to how the reality and dream world gets meshed, and you don't know what's real. And it's also a little bit, a little bit of a tie to Pie Piper type of thing, mm-hmm. luring kids. And you know, so that's another reason why they went with red and green for the for the, the sweater. Oh wow! I know. I was like, okay, cool. Oh, so that's what I was trying to reference, the, the Pied Piper part. Trying to reference in the 2010 one. That's the sucky-ass exposition behind it, but okay. <laughs> um, like, he described it better in an interview than a freaking movie did. That is interesting. That's weird. I, I never thought of it like yeah. that, but all right. <laughs> it's like, I thought it was just a fun design, Sorry. but what are you going to do? I mean, it is, but you know, Wes Craven always got to put, you know, some deep shit in everything he does. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Tina ends up waking up from her nightmare, and she's just freaking the hell out, and her mom's like, oh, no, what's wrong? And then she's like, oh, what's this? And then it turns out she actually has slashes on her nightgown. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder how that happened. This is quite spicy. Yeah, and she says the stupidest line that I've ever heard a mother say. You gotta cut your fingernails or stop that kind of dreaming. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> like, oh, man. When I was doing on my rewatch binge watching this, I'm like, did this bitch really just say that? <laughs> Like, bitch, I can't help what I dream about. And what the fuck? You know my nest ate this damn room. I'm clawing out my damn self. Go back with your horny-ass, ugly-ass, homer looking ass boyfriend in the sack. <laughs> I forgot you said that. I'm like, oh, you know, there's always the clueless parents in slasher movies, but, oh, my God. Just... I thought we hit the mountaintop talking about the coolest brother in E.T. No, she takes the cake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. She nothing compared to the mother in this movie. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I, I do love in this movie how all the parents are like, why? Huh. That's interesting. Obvious, ominous tones that indicate that they know more than they're letting on. You know. Oh, oh God. Fun stuff. <laughs> Fun stuff like that. Though, to, to be honest, it's like, the movie's almost like, oh, feel bad for me. And it's like, oh, I don't feel bad for you, bitch. Hope you roasted alive in there. Hope you felt every second of that. Damn. But again, I'm, I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. Again. Um, so she ends up going to school, and she talks to her best friend, Nancy Thompson. Or maybe I'm, I'm skipping ahead of somewhere. But... No, no, you're, you're accurate, yeah. We, That's we, next. we, we meet, uh, we meet Nancy Thompson somewhere, played by Heather Langenkamp. I think I got it right this time. Yay! And, um, her boyfriend, Glenn Lance, played by a very young Johnny Depp. Um, 
And, you know, they're just chilling, you know, having a good time, talking about, uh, you know, what they've been doing. And, uh, oh, yes, they've also, also Glenn and Nancy have also had nightmares the previous night for some reason. Yeah, and Rod had a, a, a interesting dream as he was happy to tell them in the same scene about having a hard on with Tina's name on it. <laughs> <laughs> four letters is my name, Ron. How can there be poo when you're junk for four letters? Damn. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're just like, oh, man. <laughs> like, bitch, that hurts, but that was, that was clever as shit. Okay. That was funny. <laughs> just write the letters big. I don't know. No, but, um, so they're talking about their strange dream, and, you know, they're just like, wow, we've had a lot of weird-ass dreams. And then we get to the part that really freaked me out when I was a kid. Um, oh, boy. Which is when they go to bed. Apparently her mom's going out of town and Rod's like, you know what? I'm gonna... I'm, you know, I'm gonna have... Uh, I'm gonna have a sleepover while my, while my mom's gone. Which, you know, that makes sense. Um, she has a sleepover with Nancy. And then Rod comes over and, you know... Rod's all right, I guess. He's kind of an idiot, but he's a good guy. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll just put it this way: it, it, it you know, he didn't deserve what happened to him. That's for sure. Okay, yeah, we, we can say that much of this. But <laughs> yeah, there was a, a, a period of time I was like, if this guy dies, I won't be mad. But <laughs> then they gotta fuck around, make you like him. <laughs> <laughs> and then they and then they just kill him off in the most cruel way possible. You're just like, oh my god, it, it's horrible. But again, I'm like, you know that actor. Another fun fact: they changed his name for the uh, when his his agent changed his name because at that time a lot of Latino actors weren't getting roles. So in when you see the opening of the movie, in the Nick, the name I think is. Um, Nick Corey, his real name is uh, Jesus Garcia. What? Why did they change it to Nick yeah. Corey? Because back then, a lot of Latino actors weren't getting roles unless they were getting them in stereotypical stuff, like a street gang guy or, you know, something stereotypical back in the 80s. So they changed his name so it would appear more white, so we mm -hmm. would have a better chance of getting better roles. Oh, wow, that's, that's kind of messed up. Yeah, it was back then Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, so, um, uh, so she decides, so Tina decides to solve the problem by having, um, Nancy come over for the evening, because, you know, that's what you do in the 80s. Um, Nancy, uh, hangs out, and bam, we meet Glenn once again, uh, and he's all like, oh, what's up? Which, again, is referenced in Scream, by the way, because that's exactly how uh, Billy, a.k.a. Uh, discount store Johnny Depp, also uh, first arrives in the movie. So, I am not... I will die on that hill. There's another one. It's, not, it's true, but it's still fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I, I like Johnny Depp in this movie. He's like, huh, what? Like, he's, like, fucking out of his mind throughout the entirety of this film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Rod ends up showing up. He's all like, yo, we could maybe snuggle. And she's all like, all right, fine. <laughs> no, bitch, we do more than snuggling. <laughs> it's like, uh huh. So, if I remember, I, I think they bang. And then when Tina falls asleep again, this is the part that really freaked me out when I was a kid. Uh, the disfigured man's chasing her again. Rod gets woken up and sees Tina, or not Tina, Tina, thrashing about on the, on the, on the wall. And he's all like, Tina, no! And like, that's the one thing that kind of, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? He's just standing there. Then again, he's, he's probably scared out of his mind, so I mean, yeah, you know, I don't like blame him. His girl is being, you know, ragged all over this bitch. He's yeah, like, I know, it's like, what the fuck yeah. are you doing? <laughs> But then again, when you'd see that, you'd probably be like, what the fuck is this? That is honestly one of my favorite scenes. He's all like, Tina! No! He's like yelling at her like, what? 
And then look, in his defense, he also got smacked by her into a freaking lamp into the damn wall like a bitch. Yeah, I know. She like smacks him. He's like, oh, oh, and, like falls over. It's like, oh god, this is terrible. I love, I love that scene because one because of the story wise, but also because of how they filmed it. Here comes a fun fact: how they did the her being dragged on the wall, which I think I told Jacob this. I, yeah. If I if I did, yeah, I did. It's a rotating room. Like Fred Astaire did this when he was dancing on the walls, like back in like I think the forties, fifties, whatever. So what they did was everything that's on the floor is actually on the ceiling. Everything that's on the ceiling is actually on the floor, and everything's nailed down so nothing falls out of place. So while it's rotating, she's actually like rolling onto the floor. The seat, she's on the ceiling, but she's actually rolling on the floor. And that's oh. the same room that they use for a Glenn's death later. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, when, so when the blood's shooting um, up, it's actually coming from the ceiling, coming down, spreading on the floor. But they digitally reversed it, and then they match it with the shot of the mom coming into the room and the blood stripping from, oh, from up above the frame of the camera. But, yeah, he just kind of yells at her while she's flying around on the wall, and she dies. It's really brutal. Yeah. I, I, I should note that I do like that they build up to Freddy Krueger. They don't just, like, you know, you'd expect, like, they'd show him a lot because of, you know, his iconic status. But I, I like how they build up to him. Right. And not just look at all these wacky antics with this guy. I mean, that's visually. I think that that kill. I mean, I, I feel like I'm not the only one that thinks this, but I think like that kill was the kill that they used to establish what you was going to see with Freddy. This was the, the, the it was impact killing, a statement killing, so to speak. To go, yeah. 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 And also I, showcases my, how yeah. Freddy Krueger likes to kill his <clears throat> victims like he, he likes to t- he likes to fuck with them first before he kills them like uh mm-hmm. when he tells tina when he says to tina like hey look at this and he chops two of his fingers off it's like yeah see what i can do he's like yeah it's gonna be you bitch we're gonna we're gonna throw in face. bitch so many times in this because you know what that's our that's how we're gonna show our respect to to our Lord and Savior, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> yep. I, I was with you until you said that part. I'm a child of God, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> She's all like, yeah, he's like, oh, now you're mine, bitch, and then he like kills her. <laughs> okay, he doesn't say that, but, you know, it's, it's he's more sinister in this movie. But, um... I also love the imagery and the dream sequence where uh, oh, he's yeah. introduced. Like, uh, the scene where he, like, uh, extends his arms, like, that is just some great imagery and so, uh, so haunting. And that, that the, the visual, and the visual look of Freddy is just so iconic. Oh, is that the scene where he, I thought that was later in the movie when he has the long arms. No, no, no it's you kind of got yourself. Yeah, it's in the, a- in the alleyway when he's chasing, well, before he chases Tina. Yeah. Him and his fish pulled. I forget, does he say anything? Yeah, when she says, please God, and he says, no, this, pointing at his face, this is God. I'm like, damn. <laughs> that's yeah, a mic drop hear, there. <laughs> I don't want to hear that before you get rid of it. It's like, that's a... You know, just come by me. That's a, that's a mic drop line right there. <laughs> he's, he's dropping He's dropping lines. As far as, that, well, as far as that scene, yeah, I'd have to agree with Jacob on how it's just shot. Like, it's, it's just, you could, like, it just, to me, it just comes off as they took time with that. They didn't just hurry into the the, the scare stuff or the jump scares. Like, no, when they built to something, it's because they were going from it for smart. It, was, it wasn't your typical slasher, hit, kill, 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 talk, talk, kill, and that's it. No, they want you to build up to it, so it's... By the time we get halfway into the film, you're conditioned to to question, just like the characters, if you're in the real world or if you're dreaming. 
That's why build up is important, and a lot of horror movies these days don't want to take the time to do that build up to help build up the story. Yeah, and I like the mystery of this movie. It's like, who is this person? Why is he doing this? And that's what drives the whole movie. And, and then when we get to the third act, we you know, that's when we get to the really wacky stuff. I I, I don't want to say wacky like it's a bad thing. Like it's good wacky. It's good wacky. But you know, the, the crazy stuff. The crazy stuff. Thank you. <laughs> that's where shit really goes down. <laughs> So, the next day, um, Nancy's dad, Don Thompson, um, let me see who he's played by, John Saxon, um, yep. arrests Enter Rod. Dragon. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? Uh, yeah, from Enter the Dragon. Oh, yeah, he was in that movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he just, he just arrests, uh, he's like, he's like, Rod's like, I didn't do it, please! And he's all like, nah, you're, you're under arrest, bro. Um, hey, that, well. That happens later. Oh. Yeah, this is just on the same night where it's just Heather in the um, in his office asking what happened. He gets arrested the next day. Oh, yeah. And he's just like, oh, I don't know. And then just like ominous tones that indicate, oh, shit, buddy. <laughs> like back in business. I, I, I have to know, from you and Jacob, I gotta hear from both of y'all. Say you witness something like that, and you can't explain that shit to no one. What the fuck do you do? I <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like, okay, guys, this is gonna be really crazy. Uh, you're probably gonna laugh, but you know, it's just this just from my experience. Um, I also helped in this brutal murder of this man. Um, so there was a guy. And he, like, was murdering a bunch of people a few years ago. Uh, but he ended up getting let off on a uh, on s- some bullshit legal thing. Technicality. And uh, we tracked him down and burned him to the ground. We burned him alive. Like, oh, shit. That's fucked up. He's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. But hey, at least I just straight up told the truth. I wasn't trying to lie. So, if I give me kudos for that, because I, 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 I will be just, I guess I kill myself now. I guess I, I forget. Is it did did uh did Don help with them burning him alive? Yeah, okay. Yes, technically, but as far as con- from a continuity standpoint, it's ambiguous. Because they did the Freddy Krueger show, um, Freddy's Nightmares, and they did do an episode called No More Mr. Nice Guy where they actually show you the whole technicality thing and it's focused on a different cop that, um, but they do basically imply that he was involved in it somehow as far as like I guess from the legal point of it but the actual mob part of it I don't think Don participated in it it was the town people okay so technically I guess you could say nah he wasn't but he knew about the shit. He, he still. The fact is, he knew. So, in a way, he's kind of almost as guilty as the mom for not saying shit about it. Yeah. <laughs> and basically, in, in revenge, he's, like, killing everybody. But, again, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Um. So, uh, Rod ends up... Uh, so, they end up, we're like, what the hell happened? He's like, I don't know. But I do. And, um... And, uh... Ah, shit. Hold on. I just lost track. <laughs> uh, um, oh, yes. Then he arrests Rod. Even though he's like, no, I didn't do it! Which, again, you like, later on in hindsight, you're like, well, why the fuck do you arrest him? I mean, I get it. You're like, how the fuck am I gonna arrest a guy who's dead? Like, that doesn't make sense. Plus, no one's... Who, I, I bet he probably didn't say anything because he's like, who's gonna, it's gonna believe me. Probably, but because I, I also watch people react to it, so like, why would you run? Well, fuck it, why would I stay? You know how bad this looks. No one's gonna believe me. <laughs> That's why I'm out here running barefoot with no shoes on, my dude. <laughs> yeah. Which, do you realize that everybody runs in this with no damn shoes? 
Oh, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Maybe it's, like, dream logic where you're, like, you're, like, just walking around. Like, I'm always dreaming that I'm naked or something like that. For whatever reason, That that's what I dream of. Like, it, yeah, yeah, don't get excited. <laughs> no, but, um... Yeah, so Rod gets arrested, and he's all like, oh, no. Uh, you know, he's... He, you know, what are you gonna do? Next day, uh, Nancy falls asleep. And then she dreams about this man uh, chasing her around the boiler room um, where she gets cornered. But then she ends up burning her arm on a pipe. So she ends up waking up. And then notices she has the same burn mark on her arm. And the plot thickens. Yes, exactly. Oh, boy, yeah. (laughs) Well, what do you guys think about this? Is this where we get the the one with the girls doing the, the rhyme? You know the girls doing the jump rope and they sing uh, Freddie's like lullaby tune, which is fucking yeah, creepy as shit. Yeah, the beginning of the, well, we only see them twice in the movie. It's creepy as shit. We see them in the beginning. Yeah, the beginning where they're at the high school, and then we see them at the very end. Oh. Um, yeah, I know. I thought we saw them more too, but then when I was like, when I was rewatching, I realized, oh, okay, we only see them in the movie. The beginning and the end. There's no middle part. The only time we hear the rhyme in the middle is because of Nancy in the tub. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's what made me think that we saw them more, but no, it's just, it's just those two times. Yeah, I, I like that yeah. shot when his hand co- is coming out of the out of the bathtub. Carlton, you have any fun? Out. Do you have any fun facts about that scene? That, that freaks me out every time, and not because of. It's happening because I know that that those were the sharp gloves that they used. That's why it kind of puts me on edge. Because when they were filming this, they had the sharp gloves, they had the plastic gloves, and they had the um, metal one, like scraping on the walls, or whatever. And the production designer Jim Doyle was in that was in the tub with his hand out to get that shot, but he was trying to be very very careful to not like you know. Slice your cootie. Mm-hmm. So, so it, it makes me un, a little bit uneasy, even though I know nothing happens to her, you know, in real life, but still. Yeah, I know, it does. You're just like, it also just feels gross. You're just like, ugh. Like, who the fuck thought it? Like, well, obviously, you know, Wes thought about it, but she's like, how much of, did you have to go into Freddy to think, you know, if Freddy probably do some sick ass shit like this, just come up between her legs. And like, Yum, yum. Slash her a little bit. Fucking weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Anyway. I can only imagine how hard it was to do that scene because it, it wasn't, it was like three locations I had to do just to get that scene done. Because, okay, the tub is, is on top of a tank. That's how Jindo was able to come up through the hole in the tub. But then when she gets drugged down, they're in a pool. The tarp over it, so you can't tell how far. And they admit it. They almost drowned themselves trying to film that. So they had to put all that together to do this one scene. I'm like, yeah, movie goers would not would not take the time to do that shit now. They would cheat it with CGI. Mm-hmm. So that's another reason why I, I just love the, the functionality of this scene. You have I don't no agree with her because of practical. Yeah. Exactly. See. She so, but uh, cutting back a little bit, uh, Nancy ends up visiting Rod at the police station, and he describes Tina's death. But he also describes that he's also had some strange nightmares about this weird man uh, stalking him around in their dreams. And Nancy's like, "Ha ha! So he has killed her." And I'm like, uh, "Okay, well, I, I thought that was obvious, but all right, you know, it, it, this is just a movie." It was her. Like, yeah, 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 I know. I love how she's just like, it was him. It's like, seriously? I'm like, <laughs> like, yes, bitch. Who else did you think it was? <laughs> like, who do you think it was? I'm like, come on. Anyway. So then we get to the scene where he, she falls asleep in the bathtub, and Freddie, like, he's 
playing around in the tub. Fucking weirdo. <laughs> it's Freddy. That cre- that still creeps me out. Like the glove comes out and it like grabs her and trying to like drag her down. It's like what the hell? And it's all it's one of those it's kinda like the thing where I'm like, how the hell did they do all of that? Like, oh man. Cause I'm I'm like more the they, And also the way they shoot this film, like the imagery really helps build up the suspense even more. Mm-hmm. Right. Nancy's all like, fuck this, I'm taking some caffeine, and Glenn, you're gonna come over and watch me while I sleep. And she's all like, okay, and Glenn is just like, okay. Um, so, she has another dream, and Nancy sees that the man is now preparing to kill Rod in his cell, but he ends up turning his attention to her. So Nancy ends up running away, and then wakes up when her alarm clock goes off. But sadly, yeah. the guy kills Rod by, you know, making it look like he hung himself. Yeah, it's, it's a bit kind of sad. Yeah, I know. You're just like, damn, like, that's a horrible way to go. You get framed for your girlfriend's murder, and then you just get murdered yourself. Like, damn. Especially when, like, because like I said, at the beginning of the movie, he's, he's, a, he's a dick. But then we get to this point where we kind of feel bad for him because he's like, well, yeah, of course it's easy to believe he did it because he's a, the, the, considered the bad boy. So it's like, he, he, it feels like in a way he got the shittiest, the, the shittiest kill. Yeah, he got the shittiest hand out of everybody in this movie. <laughs> well, him and Johnny Depp, but again, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Yeah. So they're like, all right, damn. Uh, you, they, they wait until now for- So, Rod ends up having a funeral, and Nancy's parents become worried when he descri- when she describes her dreams, because ominous thunder, they're no- they obviously don't know more than they're letting on. I, I don't know about you guys, but they're-, they're definitely not suspicious at all. Oh, no. No. Oh, they're convincing me. Yeah, no, it's just like, God, is this... Is this- they're they're just trying to they're just trying to help their daughter th- through this hard time. They're definitely not hiding anything. But most definitely no. not. So convinced. But, uh, you, you would piss me off about that scene more. What? That's realistic. Like they, in real life, they would treat you like you was crazy and take you to get some help, even though they know good and damn well I'm not making this up. But this. I mean, how are you gonna explain that though? To be fair. Well, if they know who this person is, oh, oh, she wasn't crazy. This is someone that we know. No, I'm, I'm, I don't want to tell her the truth, so I'm just going to act like she's crazy. Like, fuck you. Fuck you and the dick that you came out of. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also like how the sheriff in this movie is, is played by the same guy who played the sheriff in Scream. Um, her mom, so Nancy's mom takes her to a sleep disorders clinic, and, uh, she has another dream, but this time, she manages to get the, uh, man's fedora, which we end up finding out a name, Fred Krueger. You know that doctor is Roger Rabbit? Seriously? Yeah, he does the voice of Roger Rabbit. Oh, Wow. I did not know that. I know. I didn't know that until a couple months ago. So for 27 years of my life, has been a lie. <laughs> like, I come out of green, and Roger Rabbit wants to put me back to sleep after I was dying. Like, fuck you. Like, what you said, not that I'm out my, my ass, Mom. Ah. Sorry, I had to go to the bathroom. Oh, well, that you had hell of a timing. 
was like, wait, what? Is this nigga shitting while I'm in the middle of my car? <laughs> so, uh, yes, done, done, done. We end up figuring out the guy's name is Fred Krueger. Or Freddy Krueger. I, th- I think Freddy Krueger sounds better off the tongue. It does, yeah. Fred, Fred sounds like, this is my government name. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, Fred sounds like that really overly friendly neighbor that you have. Like, oh, what's up, man? It's like if you call Jason Voorhees, hey, Jay Voorhees. Yeah, it's like Fred Krueger. No, Freddy Krueger. Yeah, like the dude be like, hey, I got some popsicles. You want some? (laughs) I'm like, no, I'm not getting popsicles. (laughs) I've seen enough Family Guy not to fall for that trick. Get your fat ass back here. Um, so, and she ends up pulling it in the real world. She's like, ha! I'm not crazy. <laughs> and mom's like, bitch, you're tripping. He's like, what? So. Oh, yeah, she pisses me off on that scene. <laughs> I, I like how they just decide to barricade the house after she's like, no. Or according to this Wikipedia, I like how they just go back to the house and just barricade it. And then she's all like, um, well. You see, Freddy Krueger was actually an insane child murderer. He was like a child murderer or molester. From what Wes said, he was both. But they kind of are ambiguous on that, I guess because they don't want to make it seem like they're promoting a character that's a molester. Fair enough. So yeah, he was. But, um... He killed 20 children but got released on a technicality. But then, in a tragic case of fate, or maybe not a tragic case of fate, more like, um, fuck this guy, he got his just desserts. He got burned alive by the victim's parents living on their street who were seeking vigilante justice. Ugh. You know... I, I, I probably should feel bad because, you know, burning alive is a pretty bad way to go, but I don't. I really don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I, he deserved it. <laughs> in a way, you, you, you feel. Uh, mom, has, uh, mom mentality is never really good, but at the same time, they make a good-ass argument. In, in, this t- in this case, he's John Lester. Oh, well... I can't find room to really lecture you here. Just, all right, just don't do it again, all right? Okay. <laughs> well, you just give a lecture to Freddy Krueger, like, hey, stop murdering children. And he'll be like, okay. Oh, like, okay, like, don't, do, like, don't right, kill yeah. people again. I mean, if they're a molester, okay, fine. We'll let it slide, but... What? Know, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. You live and you learn, like, yeah, I won't do it again. Oh, no, Jacob, Jacob would say, I won't do it again, but he's got his fingers crossed in front of his back. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Lily Wonka, the, uh, I think it's Veronica. He's like telling yeah. her about it. He's like telling the kids about the candy, and they're like, okay. Or he's making him promise something. She has her fingers behind her back. I'm like, oh, that bitch. <laughs> I hope she dies. <laughs> well, she kind of does, I guess. She was actually a bitch on the set. <laughs> so I, I don't. I watched her scene where she turns into a human giant, big ass, overweight Smurf with glee. <laughs> I love that. It's so good. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now I'm thinking of the remake too. I'm just like, oh god. Can we please oh, stop, one, with, that one, no. stop oh, talking about oh, remakes? Oh. Okay, we'll we'll stop. So, Nancy ends up coming to the realization that, yep, this this fits this guy's M.O., that he's a uh, a, a child murderer guy. I don't want to say molester, but I'm, I'm going to say that's not above his, uh, his depravity. Um, he, so, she realizes that Kruger is now killing her and her friends out of revenge. And as well for fun, because, you know, he's an asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he likes to have fun. That's Freddy Krueger. Um, are there a lot of bitches in this movie, or is that later on in the series? Oh, that's later. That's no, later. He he sings more bitches than Elton John song "Bitches Back." 
Because I'm like, you know, we all we all know Freddy Krueger is the guy who's like, yeah, bitch, you're mine, you know, sort of thing. But man, I, I'm trying to think. Does he even say bitch in this one? <laughs> no, I don't think he does. I was about to say they take him a lot more seriously in this movie than in some of the other ones. Yeah, because even in the ones that uh, Wes Craven does later, like the third one and the seventh one, I don't recall him saying bitch. So, Kruger, who is now a vengeful ghost, I guess that exists, um, he's just, he's just killing all of the children, because, you know, he's an asshole, you can't, you can't, now, yes, burning someone alive is not something that is, uh, recommended on this channel, but, on this show, we do not condone this, but, um, I'm sorry, but you kinda got your just desserts, you know, you can't really, can't really get mad over that. I don't know what you guys think. Jacob, I got, like, let's hear you first. They have to deserve it. <laughs> I like the bluntness of what he said. <laughs> He's like, no, he deserved sorry. it. <laughs> I was expecting like, to say something like, you know, well thought out. No, just straight to the point. No, fuck him. <laughs> Damn. You Jacob was just like, I'd, I would have helped too. Would have had one of the pitchforks. <laughs> or burn him alive. Well, you're already dead, so I can't help you. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, it's weird. In this one, I, I know later they clarify, but in this one, it's hard to tell what Freddy really is. I mean, it, it, later yeah. on, you're like, okay, he's a dream demon. All right, cool. But in this one, you're like, is he a normal person who's just burned and has got powers? Is he what, weak as fuck and real world and can't do shit? Like, what? I kind of, I kind of thought of him as like a boogeyman. Yeah, yeah, in a way, but an, but an actual boogeyman, not just like a metaphorical one, like Michael. Yeah, no, I was about to say it's not, it's not like Michael, no. Where it's then like again, you can't kill the boogeyman. It just like blows up or something. <laughs> you can, you can light him on fire, but you know he's he's he's, he's fine. He'll be fine. Like, yeah, you can shoot him four or five times. Shoot him, like, 50%. He'll be all right. <laughs> you get the cap to him, but he'll still be fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tupac's in heaven, like, bitch. Yeah, yeah, Tupac's like, what the fuck? How come they survived? I'm I'm dead. Bullshit. <laughs> this <laughs> Bullshit. But then again, he did get he did shot five times and survived that. So you're like, yeah, whatever. I guess it evens out. But um, R.I.P. Pac. Damn. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> So, Nancy's like, oh, shit. So, she tries to call Johnny Depp to warn him, but um, his father is like, oh, um, his dad's like, oh, he's busy right now. That whole thing. You're like, fuck. That pisses me off, too. Yeah, and I think Johnny Depp gets the worst. Just He gets sucked into his bed. You're like, that is horrible. Oh, my God. What do you think's the worst death, him or Rod? I, I think getting sucked into a bed's a pretty horrible yeah, way to go out. Because at least at least Rod was kind of quick. So I think Rod was quick. Glenn, you're being sucked into a bed and then all your insides are blown up. You feel that? Yeah, it's a slow death. Oh god, I'm getting chills thinking about that shit. Uh, hell, Lord Jesus, no. Because, like, 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 if you give me an option, either snap my neck or I die slowly in my bed. Look, just don't, don't play with me. Don't toy with me. Just end my life so I can see Jesus. Snap my shit. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Freddy Krueger, I don't know. He's just, he's a sick fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's just damn yeah. sure it's. Come on. Oh. And then you go have a stretcher pulled out. Fuck no, you need a mop and a bucket. Oh as my as god! That, they say that in the in the scene. And I'm like, oh, okay. They say that's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so now she's alone. She's like, ah, shit. Um, and she puts her mom to sleep, and then asks her dad, who's across the street investigating Glenn's death, because you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, she's like, come back here in like 20 minutes, and, uh, you know, let's, let's see what happens. 
So, this comes to just, like, a great little... I, 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 another really good third act, you know? Wes Craven, man, he's good with those. He really is. Master of them. Uh, I'll let yeah. you guys take it from here, because I'm, uh... Cause I, I feel like I'm skipping some stuff. I mean, a few parts, but basically we're covering the big parts. Uh-huh. I'd have to say, I think... Considering how things were towards the end of production, it wraps up not that bad. Especially well, what happened at the end of production? Well, they were running out of time and running out of money. Oh, <laughs> that's not that's not and good. So when they did that last scene, it came from compromise and mm -hmm. for speed, because Robert Shea wanted it to have an ending where they could have a sequel. West didn't have a plan for a sequel. And the studio was like, well, you got to pick an ending so you can shut production down so we don't go over budget. Because they were very, very close to doing so. So, Robert and Wes, even them butting heads on this, they were like, look, let's come to compromise. How about this? We'll just do all three of the endings. Robert said, okay, cool. So, that's why we got the ending with the... Because the original ending was Freddie was going to drive off in the car then they thought about the, the girls jumping rope, and then they thought about the mom being sucked in. So they did all three. They just didn't do the Freddy driving off. Instead, they do with the top of the car is the Freddy sweater. That, they do drive off to that. The mom, they have like a doll, like life-size cast doll of her, and they swoop her through the window in one swoop, and then they were able to shut production down, and then they put the girls in there in post-production and they got all three endings. Mm -hmm. With five minutes literally to spare. Intriguing. Very. Because no, I had to get this done in like 30 days. So wait, they were just making this up as they were going along? Well, some of it, yeah. That's part of filmmaking, especially back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Because they were having money problems, because they weren't sure if like people were gonna have the money to cover them, and they had to do stuff on the slide to get their vision done as quick as they could. Then they got to deal with the the editing, because the splash from Tina when she splashed into the bed, till the day Wes Craven died, he was mad that they, the MPA made him cut out that splash, because it had more blood in the splash, but they they made him cut it. So it was, it was a lot. And then when post-production, they uh, almost didn't have a way to distribute the film because the, was I think it was Smart Egg Productions saying that, well, you don't have the money to pay the people to cut, up, to cut and edit your film, so we won't release the print. Robert J. had to go through a lot of stressful shit to raise money, so I don't know what he did. To this day, I still don't know, but he did something where he was able to get more money for it would be paid. Because one of the producers, they had to pay the crew themselves with their credit card, like three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's it's guerrilla filmmaking. <laughs> oh my but god! Again, that's that's why I love the movie because they went through all that and still had a really good product come out. That's Freddy to me is the epitome of what it means to be a true horror movie director and making stuff work. Hundred percent. I'm more of a Carpenter fan, but I Craven definitely is very good as well. I mean, you know, yeah, but, you, you yeah. know this Carlton. <laughs> yeah, you know. uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Carpenter deserves all the credit in the world, but you know, by this point, at least Carpenter had some some stroke to him because he had. He had done um, New York, the, the the New York movie with Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. He had done two Halloween movies. He did the this uh, the Elvis thing. So he had a little bit more reputation. By this point, all Wes Craven had was The Last House on the Left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forget about that one. Oh, uh, oh yeah, what's the one he did with the... Um... God damn. The, the Hills Have eyes. eyes, didn't he do that one too? He did. He had the Sean Cunningham who did 
the original Friday the 13th, he had him as second unit director to pick up shots because they were behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before he made The Nightmare on Elm Street, he did direct those films and The House on the Left. And I feel like he was trying to escape this exploitation label that he's been given because uh, people were offended by uh, House on the Left because of its uh, disturbing uh, context. Mm-hmm. But what Scurvy wanted to prove to everyone, he's like, no, I'm actually a very talented director. They made Nightmare on Elm Street, which is now one of the most iconic films and slashers out there. So. Yeah. So there was a lot of pressure on that one. Mm-hmm. Hey, he also There's did the Swamp Thing work. movie. I always forget he did the Swamp Thing movie. <laughs> I, I, didn't know, I didn't know that there was a Swamp Thing movie, I'm going to be honest. Really? Oh, all right. I knew that there was a Swamp Thing show. I didn't know there was a Swamp Thing movie. You, I think I told you this before, and you judged me. Because I know how much you love Swamp Thing. I'm like, I didn't know he did that. <laughs> that's all right. Like, I haven't actually like seen it myself. But back to this. But back to this. Um, this movie is. Uh, this is where we get to the really crazy stuff. Um, Freddy, like I love when I love when he's like calling her on the phone, and he like and his, his tongue comes out. It's really weird. I don't know. That's another one. I'm like, huh? I wonder how they did that. <laughs> mechanic. Well, yeah, I know it's a mechanic, but it's like you know, I was like, damn. Mechanic. And then, even the prop people are like, are we taking this too far? But I'm like, look, we had Freddy's claws on her legs. At this point, you might as well go all out. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say, if I can, like, give compliments to Wes Craven's movies, I like how nasty they are. I don't mean, like, that in a bad way. Like, a lot of his films are, um, oh, what do you call it? Not in bad taste, but um, they 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 go all out in terms of like the really creepy stuff. Yeah, they don't, he, he doesn't hold back. Yeah, no, he don't hold back at all. Like if you've seen like well, Last House on the West Left, Craven. ooh. No, oh, well, I respect about Wes Craven. You don't give a shit what <clears throat> anybody thinks. Like, oh, you took that too far. It's like I don't care. I'm not holding back. At least I have a set of balls. I'm like some people. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I, I can already see it. When, we, when I get Legend Studios off the ground and Jacob's doing his movie, I'm like, oh, well, Carlton, you, if Jacob kind of did this in the scene, we think it's a little much. I'm like, fuck it, I like it. Let him do it. But, but we don't want to offend anyone. Fuck him. Just don't oh. watch it. That's how you get not offended. Just don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, don't watch the movie. Why even watch the movie if you think if you know that you're going to be offended by what I have to deliver? I'm like, and also, this is a horror movie. What did you expect was going to be in here, Shakespeare? Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, it, it's funny you mention that. I mean, Shakespeare was also pretty offensive if you read some of his stuff. <laughs> well, no horror shit, but yeah. Well, no horror shit, yeah. but you know. But still, like, come on now. It, it's it, it's mature people. If you can't handle this, then just don't watch it. Let everyone else enjoy it. It's really that easy. It's like when I watch, like, The Critical Drinker, just, like, fucking shit talk all these movies. I'm like, then why are you watching them, dude? <laughs> it's like... Yeah. <laughs> you watch them? Just, you, like... You, you even like movies? Like, wow. It's oh like... God. I'm like, just watch movies. You like them. Like, like what the fuck? Yeah, I don't like movies. Like, I don't like movies. Like, I'm like, just watch movies you like. It's it's what I do. And I'm much happier doing that. <laughs> right. And then you, you come off as, like, okay, you so all you do, you want to be famous for bitching about shit. Who wants to put their energy into that? Me, hey, I mean, there, people like it. So I mean, I'm a, I, 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 no disrespect intended to critical. I like no, his channel, dis- but disrespect intended for them. Fuck them. Well, okay, like they they, they don't like him, but them. yeah. <laughs> but my point is, like, just talk about movies you like. That that wouldn't hurt. But yeah, <laughs> I I mean I. I have talked about movies I don't like, but I try to talk more about movies I do like, like this right. one, because, you and know. Even the, and even the movies that you don't like, you still try to find things in it that you do like. I noticed that about you. Y- yeah, I try. <laughs> I really try. <laughs> Ugh. I'm like, okay, I wasn't crazy about this, but hey, I see what they were going for, or what they did do this. That was pretty cool. I'm like, all right, cool. Respect. Respect. I'm, I'm kind of dreading the day we talk about Avatar. That'll be a tough one to sit through. 
I ain't being, I'm not on the show on that one. Fuck y'all. <laughs> you know what? I don't blame you. That's a. Uh, I saw little... it once. Once. Never again. Never fucking Same here. Same here. Can I, can I just, like, no. Can I just mention how great Robert Unglund is as Freddy Krueger? He is Freddy Krueger. I know. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's like Brad Dorff is Chucky. The man just did not, like, even in, like, the really hammy movies. Like, he just did not miss a beat. Nope. You can tell he, he had fun doing this. Oh, yeah. Oh, clearly. I still, I still can't get over the fact that Freddy Krueger helped Luke Skywalker get a role. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That is, that'll always be cool as fuck to me. A hundred percent. But yeah, I, I love Freddy Krueger. Or, well, I love Robert Unglund as Freddy Krueger. He's always just a blast, and he's really fun in this one, too. Except he's way more sinister in this. Which is why I like this one the best, because it feels like Freddy's taken more seriously as a threat, rather than just, you know, eating, like, human meatballs. I think he's... He, yeah, in the seventh one, that's when you take him as a threat again for the first time. So, or, oh, what's some other goofy shit he's done? Oh, the superhero uh, in the fifth one where he kills a guy that likes comics, and so you, you, we see Freddy as a superhero. Ah, uh, yes, that that too. Uh, what are some other goofy um, shit he's done? Uh, there was, a boy. He, oh, yeah, he seduces a boy, and then, like, his, like, and then he, like, vomits out, like, these, like, slug things. It's like, what the, f- what is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, we can't we can't forget about the Scream Queen Mark in the second one. Oh my oh, god. god. <laughs> that boy can scream. This is I'm like, I'll be damned. I, I think uh, there's also one where he like pulls the kid to the TV. I'm just like, what is this? Like <laughs> Oh the third oh yeah, welcome to prime time, bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the best bitch. That's the best bitch to me. Welcome to prime time, bitch. And just like he like pulls him through the window. He was like, "What is this? This is a god. This is a fucking cartoon now." <laughs> oh, Susan <laughs> Collins. <laughs> oh, it's like, good lord. It's it's. But like in this movie, they're actually like, okay, this guy's actually like a serious threat, guys. And they actually do a really respectable job, I think. <laughs> it's <laughs> thinking about other stuff he's done after the first one. Um. I know. <laughs> oh, there, there's probably more stuff we could come up with because you know Freddie's been through a lot in his tenure. <laughs> he's done a lot in his tenure. <laughs> He's like, I, I, I'm not like, denying that's this. Cool. Well, that's all I can say is just, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, the girl with the asthma, sucking, basically kiss, sucking her dry. <laughs> oh my god, yes! I totally forgot about that. Like, want to suck face? No. It's <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Oh, but it's fun. It, it, it's all good fun. <laughs> no, you're burnt ass, hell no. <laughs> on a damn beach putting on fucking sunscreen on your nose with sunglasses. I'm like, really, Freddy? I, I also I'm like Freddy. that, I also like that Robert Unglund is like not, like, he looks the part. Like, he looks like a guy you'd see and you're like, yeah, he looks a little off to me. And all it took for him to get noticed was being an alien in a miniseries called V. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that's how he, people knew who he was because that was his first taste of celebrity. Mm. I was like, all right, cool. He did that, I think, like, a year or two before Freddy. I mean, you know, Robert Unglund has such an impact uh, <clears throat> on this character that he has never been recasted, not count the remake. Yeah. yeah. All the sequels and uh, Freddy vs. Jason, yeah, all the sequels, like, never been recast. Robert Unglund has always been Freddy Krueger. Even, look, even being on a TV episode of the, the Goldbergs or whatever for yeah. a horror episode, I'm like, yeah, whatever, Kruger. It's Kruger! 
I am Kruger. Nobody else. Bitch. <laughs> like yeah. Jackman's Wolverine. No one, I'm, nobody else can be Wolverine. So. Yeah, I know. That's that's funny you mentioned Wolverine. You know, I wonder when if I wonder if Chris Claremont when he and John Byrne were making Sabretooth, I wonder if they saw this movie and were like, "Perfect, we're just gonna make a Wolverine that's basically Freddy Krueger and call him Sabretooth." I wouldn't be surprised. Me either. <laughs> You're just like uh, created by us. Um, with uh, uh, thanks to with special thanks to Wes Craven. I mean, if we if people if we heard half the stories on how characters were created, we'd be like, wait, that's how you came up with that? Like, yep. Like Wes Craven. Oh, I came up with Freddy because it was the name of a bully that I knew in high school. Well, what about the whole sweaters and the hat thing? Oh, some homeless guy that was from, that everyone knew was a mental hospital used to look at me, out, you know, outside my window, <laughs> and I had to get my big brother to put a baseball bat to, to defend me. Yeah, normal shit. To, to get it? <laughs> really? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. There was a guy that used to be out, he was homeless. He would look up at their uh, building that they were in, and he would always smile at him. Because he was, like I said, he was mental. So one night he tried to get in, and he went to his older brother's room, and his brother got a bat, and, you know, they called the cops, and then they ended up getting him. And they never found out what happened to him later, but they never saw him again. But yeah, that scared him so bad, he remembered it, and he came, that's what helped him create Freddy. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot he was a, <laughs> I forgot he was, he was like, he was the caterpillar. He was the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland and Freddy and G- versus Jason. I totally forgot about that. Oh my god! <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, in terms of other wacky shenanigans he's got up to. Oh, it's about as wacky as when he was like a big ass worm in the third one. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, which funny enough, shit. which funny enough, they didn't. They made him like that blue color because they thought he just looked like a big penis. <laughs> a, a burnt, nasty ass, slimy ass dick. Yep. Accurate. Like, no, I'm not gonna do that. But all right, we we've gone on enough tangent here, so <laughs> let's finish this up here. So, Nancy rigs booby traps around the house and ends up grabbing Kruger out of the dream and puts him into the real world. So now Kruger is fucked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is he? I guess he is. She did. She ends up lighting him on fire. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that always works. <laughs> I love. I love. She's like, ah, yes. I. I shall repeat history and light him on fire because it worked the first time. <laughs> I mean, like, you don't, don't decapitate his head off. Yeah, let's burn him alive. Look, you've been burnt once. What's another one gonna do? Shit, you should be on. You should be eh? <laughs> Yeah, second time's a charm. I I like how he pops out and just starts chasing her. It's it's a nice it's nice, and uh, you can tell he's just having a blast. It's Freddy. He always has a blast. Well, I was talking about Robert Unglin, but yes, that too. Yeah, Freddy and Robert Unglin. <laughs> Robert Unglin having a blast playing Freddy Krueger, but Freddy having a blast killing his people. Mm-hmm. And then the guy who they had on fire doing that stunt he, he was actually supposed to be like on fire for only a few seconds but he made the choice to like go down the stairs and come back up i think he was like on fire for like maybe a minute and a half two minutes or whatever oh, shit. then when they put him out on fire he pops up like how'd i do that, that oh, man, i paid well to be on fucking fire yeah so it's crazy that Sonny like just pumped his chest out of respect, right? <laughs> so Kruger ends up, um, so she ends up lighting him on fire and locks him in the basement. But Nancy rushes to the door to get help. So the police end up arriving and find that Kruger has escaped from the basement. So Nancy and her dad go upstairs and finds that uh, Kruger, who is still on fire, uh, smothering her mom in her bedroom. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, 
What, what do you guys think of this? <laughs> things I can complain about the movie, but this is the one effect, I'm like, y'all could have done this better. Y'all took this a little too, it's a little too goofy, the way she just looks like, you know, like a skeleton waving as she's going into the bed. I'm like, uh, whatever, okay, I guess. After he sat on her, like a campfire, and just plucked at her while on fire and shit. It was okay. It, it's kind of weird. It kind of it almost takes me out, but because I already had fun by this point, I just kind of give it a pass. All right, the bitch is, has gone into her bed. I guess I guess she's sober now. So, Don, her dad, ends up extinguishing the fire. Kruger and her mom vanish into the bed. And then Don leaves the room, and Freddy comes from behind Nancy. But Nancy ends up realizing that Kruger is powered by the fear of his victims. So she's like, mm, fuck you, and turns her back to him. And Kruger evaporates. Which, you know, eh. <laughs> I would have taken the lighting him on fire, but that's all right. I mean, uh, yeah. But it, well, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's a Shakespearean in me. But I like that she, in a way. She basically that was a more stronger. It was a stronger way to defeat him by taking away the one thing that makes Freddy who he is: fear. And take and you know that's empowering to the character and that makes her stand out from everybody else. Because like, um, Lori, she defeats Michael because she was she was just at the right place, right time, and Dr. Luna saved her. Um, all the people who survived Jason, they fought their asses off and were able to, you know, do what they needed to kill him and set traps and stuff like that. You know, Na um, Nancy does it because she actually defeats him. She took away Freddy's power. Mm -hmm. So for me, that kind of, that makes her stand out a little bit different from the other final girls. Yeah, I like that Nancy, um, I like that Nancy's very scrappy. She's a lot like uh, another heroine we were talking about last week. Um, uh, Sydney from Scream. You know, she doesn't go out like a bitch. She's going to fight him to the death. And oh, yeah. that's kind of what she does. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Craven likes, sure likes having strong women that can actually do stuff. I like that about him. Mm -hmm. Which, thank you, Wes Craven. Respect. Instead of making him a damsel in distress. She's like, oh no! Freddy's coming! He's like, ah, He's like no, I'm gonna fucking kill this bastard. Because <laughs> even in Scream... <laughs> I'm a the, bad bitch. Because even in Scream, and the, the other chick that gets like her head stuck in the garage door, she oh. was the main character, but even she fought back and was actually doing shit trying to get away. I was like, alright. Just like, yeah, some of these damn beer bottles, whatever. Oh, I forgot to mention that in the screen when she threw the beer bottles at him. You ooh. Um, I, I just forgot that little detail. Not, not, I didn't forget that scene. But, um, yeah, so... Bobbing him with Miller Lights or some shit. Uh, Kruger ends up evaporating when he attempts to lunge at her. Um, so that's the end of that. At least for right now. So Nancy, later on, I guess, steps out into a bright and foggy morning where her friends and her mom are still alive. So Nancy gets into Glenn's convertible to go to school, and then she ends up seeing the green and striped top uh, comes down and ends up locking them in as the car drives uncontrollably down the street. We then see the three girls playing jump rope and chanting the nursery rhyme as... Nancy's mom is grabbed by Kruger through the front door window and just gets torn out. Just, just torn out. It's brutal. Brutally. That bitch was flung in. It, it was brutal. Brutally. It was brutal. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, you don't You don't remember that? Uh, All-Star Batman and Robin? I know. That's, <laughs> that's why I was like, okay. Because I, I was like, 
goddammit, he's referencing out of all fucking things of Frank Miller. You gotta I'm, that I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Are you dense? Are you fucking retarded? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. God, I love that book. <laughs> I have it. That's yeah. the sad part. I have it. Yeah. <laughs> I have it. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's the end of Nightmare on Elm Street. A reference to Frank Miller at his bat shittiest. <laughs> but and all star all star Batman and Robin. Oh. Fuck yeah. Oh god. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, I wonder how you know, that'd be a fun crossover, Batman and Freddy Krueger. Oh god. I mean you might as well he's he look, he's yeah. gonna have another crossover spawn, he's face predator, you might as well. Yeah, why the hell not? Shit. But see, I think the thing with that is people already know who would win. Batman. But if you're gonna do, <laughs> if you're gonna do a crossover, do Christian Bale so you can say. Freddy, where's the blah, blah, blah. Oh God! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> After two pages, Batman's dead. <laughs> oh my God! The readers. <laughs> Shut up, bitch! Like, even Jason or Michael would just tilt their heads, be like, "The fuck," and just slice them. I, I can definitely see I can definitely see Freddy trying to do some like mind rape on on Batman with his parents. He's like, "Yeah, bitch, they died. You couldn't do shit." And then they're like, "Damn." No. Even the Joker's like there, and he's like, "Jesus, man, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> fucked oh. up." <laughs> Look, that's a scene. Freddy and Jason working together. Imagine that. Oh my God, they would just wreak horror. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and knowing Freddy, he would in the dream world be like. Giving to, 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 like, Martha, doggy style, to her corpse or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> Knowing how fucked up Freddy is, yeah, he would do something. <laughs> you definitely see him doing something like that, and then just gonna piss Batman right off. <laughs> Give me a battle. Like, if we're in the dream world, if you die, is that murder? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. Mic drop. Let's do it. <laughs> Longs there's BDC. BBC. Oh, God damn it. I fucking knew he was going to say that shit. <laughs> I had to. You fucker. I for, you told me he was going to do this like a couple days ago. I forgot, bitch. <laughs> Freddy, tell me. Do you have a BBC? Clearly, <laughs> as you can hear from my voice, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. This has gone off the rails already. <laughs> God damn it. Uh. <laughs> But I, I'm sure that would be a fun comic if they decided to do something like that in the future, you know? I don't know. Yeah, have Todd McFarlane write it. No, who? Todd McFarlane. Oh. I see how, I see how crazy it gets. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Because he's crazy in his writing, but he's focused. If you have old man Frank Miller now write that shit... Oh you. my god. <laughs> god help us all. <laughs> And you guys know I love Frank Miller. Oh, yeah. But, but he's not as all the way there as he used to be in his writing. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, God I help us all. If <laughs> modern day Frank Miller wrote that, it, it would be a fucking Looney It'd be a Looney Tunes cartoon. Rated R. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> um, though, I will say, one of my... Um, I will say, I do actually like his Terminator Batman stuff, where, or was it RoboCop? I think RoboCop was also in it. Yeah, he did, he did that. I like that he reimagined the, uh, the RoboCop as one of the first of Skynet. I'm like, that's a really clever idea. At least in my opinion, anyway. God, I can't wait for RoboCop next year. But, um, yeah, that was Nightmare on Elm Street. Great film. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, fun for the children, too. Definitely. But you fucked yeah. up there. Yeah, the, the kids will love it. Oh, yeah. Just like Freddy loved the kids. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> got dark really fast. Um, that got really, that got really intense. Um... Oh man. Um, well, I, I guess uh, that we, I guess we have some time to talk about some movies we've 
we're looking forward to. I know you're looking forward to Black Adam, Carlton. Fuck yes. Almighty God, yes. Yeah, I was kind of like, eh, you know, not, not really into the character, and he's all like, you dis, you disappoint me. Right. <laughs> Why must you fail me so often? You know. Like, you better watch this shit. I know Jake was watching it for reasons that we can't say because we can't spoil it, but yeah. Uh, for another reason, Pierce Bronson is Dr. Fate. Yeah. yeah, that does look like a lot of fun. I- I've always loved Pierce Brosnan. I think he got fucked over with James Bond. Really? Little, he only got go. He only, he only, he only had one really good movie. I like all of his James Bond, but I guess I'm in the minority. I guess. Well. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Cause, cause like, like him, Daniel Craig, and Sean Connery. They're the the top three best James Bond, so I feel like he at least is secured in one of the better Bonds. Though, uh... And that's just me, I guess. Yeah, it's alright. Um, I, I, yeah, Sean Connery's my favorite, because, you know, we you know. Can't wait for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. <laughs> that one's gonna be good. Man, uh, oh, yeah. It's gonna be a little bit sad, because that's John Williams' last... Um, oh, yeah. Sucks. So yeah. just the, the, on that alone, you gotta watch it. Oh yeah, apparently Harrison Ford is now going to be Thaddeus Ross because William Hurt just decided, you know what? I'm just gonna up and die, and everyone's like, "Well, shit." Harrison yeah, Ford. For I was surprised by that, but honestly, I'm like, yeah, yeah, he can do it. I'm I'm hoping it's not phoning it in Harrison Ford and he like actually put some effort because. I know he's kind of stopped caring the last couple years. The last couple or the last 20? Uh, maybe last 20 is more accurate, but you know. Alright, we'll say 14 then. Alright, that's a good yeah. compromise. <laughs> <laughs> we don't say that in a mean way. We love Harrison Ford. Yeah, no. We, oh, we, yeah. We, oh, yes. Legend. All the love. All the love. But I think he'll do good. Though, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking Disney forward... Movie, oh, sorry. For that Disney money? Yeah, he'll do fine. Yeah, I'm down for him playing Thunderbolt Ross. You know, I'm actually looking forward to him... I'm actually looking forward to Indiana Jones 5. I mean, I'm kind of nervous because, you know, Harrison Ford's old and all. But James Mangold's directing it, and, you know, he made one of the best superhero films in the last, like, decade with Logan. So I'm like... You know, if it ain't Spielberg, I'll give it to Mangled. I think he could make a really good Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. I mean, you can't get any worse than the uh, the, the last one. <coughs> oh, well, see, I'm in the minority on that one, too. I didn't think that one was bad. It's not my favorite, but for yeah. old, old Indiana Jones, you know, mm-hmm. Yeah, people, okay. people have said it's like Last Airbender level bad. Like, no, it's not that uh, bad. Uh, like, uh, yeah, I'll agree down. there. Not that bad. Uh, oh, last... the fuck down. <laughs> yeah. It's the worst out of the four, but it's not terrible. Oh, God. I don't even want to talk about The Last Airbender. Well, you and me both. So, well, look, speaking with, of... With them having a new one coming out, that's going to be a series run by the people who did the cartoon, you'll have another reason to forget about the movie. Though, exactly. to be honest, I, when I first saw the last Airbender movie, I was like, you know, this isn't too bad. Then I saw the show, and I was like, wow, this movie is terrible. <laughs> 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 Horrible adaptation of this. I, I love Avatar The Last Airbender. Just one of the greatest shows of all time. Not going to be disappointed, but I didn't watch it for the first time until last year. Yeah, I know. I remember you telling me about it. I'm like, what, what do you think? And he's like... I, my friend Luke, he loves it. And he's like, you gotta watch it. Because it was on Netflix. I binge-watched all three seasons in one night. Oh, wow. That's impressive. Took me like a couple could, weeks to rewatch it. Again. I, I was into it. I was like, okay, I want to know what happens. What happens? And I was like, okay, that's what happened. Damn, I'm mad that I missed ten years of this shit. Though, I, but speaking of, of that director, he's coming out with a new movie called um, Knock at the Cabin, based on the book uh, Cabin at the End of the World, which I actually have over there. I want to read that soon. Um, but um, in all honesty, I'm kind of done with Shyamalan's movies. <laughs> yeah. 
the trailer was actually good, and I'm like, can you please stop cock teasing me with this movie? I'm trying to like, I'm trying to avoid your movies because you've disappointed me too many times to count, and I'm I'm kind of tired of it, Shyamalan. Did you see old? No. I did. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about it. I'm I'm still mixed on it. I need to see it again. Like it's like the concept is good, but the execution leaves me confused. To be completely honest, when I first saw the poster, I honestly thought it'd be. I, I <clears throat> just judging from the poster, like the teaser poster, it looked like it was something Jordan Peele would direct, like a simple title like Old Get Dude, Out. Us. Honestly, I, I like, kind of. <laughs> I, I kind of like, wish he did. Yeah. Nope. No. Nah, nah, I saw him. I shot him. I was like, eh, now I kind of wish George Peele would have directed. Yeah. Hey like, man. The movies I've ever enjoyed of M Night is Sign, The Village, and um, um, Unbreakable. Oh, I love Unbreakable. Underrated movie. Unbreakable, Six Sense, uh, Split was pretty good. Oh, Split was I fantastic. That one's pretty good. Split. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen Glass. Oh my you god, don't watch Glass. You want to get pissed oh off, watch Glass. Oh, damn. That bad? Yes. Oh, god damn. Or, well, it's pretty good, and then the last act happens, and that'll really piss oh, you off. God. Oh, one of those. Yep. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Never mind. Oh, shit. But, yeah, so... M. Night Shyamalan being, you know, but Knock at the Cabin, not gonna, I'm probably not gonna see it, but you did manage to get me to get the book, Cabin at the End of the World, so thank you, Shyamalan, I'm gonna be reading that now. I'll still probably see it. I like movies, I'm open to anything, so um, I'll, I probably I'll, won't like it or I'll love it. Who knows? I'll wait for y'all to tell me. <laughs> I wish y'all to tell me how it was. Yeah, no, I, it's not that I, it's not like, I mean, I love movies too, but, you know, I'm kind of tired of Shyamalan just, like, coming out with interesting ideas and then not delivering on them. Right. If you're going to deliver on original ideas, take those from Jordan Peele. Um, The what? Visit actually wasn't that bad. Which one? Uh, The Visit, it's the one about the grandparents. Oh, was... God, oh God, I saw that. I saw that. I'm still mad at him for that. What? what you didn't like that? that? That was one of his decent ones. No, no, no. I'm mad because of the grandpa wiping his shit on the boy's face. Oh, my God. I, oh, I forgot I'm about that. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> I would, me, and, me and Gramps would have to lock up. Oh, Lord. I, I remember there's a scene in The Northman. I don't know if any of y'all have seen that. But I did. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy just fucking grabs her period blood and just smacks the dude in the face with it. And that shit kind of... That shit low-key traumatized me for a week. Motherfucker. <laughs> Jake, what? Jacob, did you see The Northman? I still need to. Oh, my yeah, God. <laughs> it's epic as fuck. Oh, it's so... It, it, it's an Eggers movie. I'll put it that way. Like, Jacob, you know what I, I feel... I feel like the guy who did Northman should have done Thor Ragnarok. That would have been fucking awesome. Well, it Robert been... Eggers directing a Thor movie, that'd be fucking legendary. Yeah, it was that good. It was violent, it was dark, it was beautifully shot. I know, Knowing how you are about cinematography, you would bust to not watching this movie. Oh god, I know I will. Just from uh, see, watching the trailers, I'm like, this film's gonna have some phenomenal cinematography. Well... Man. I won't spoil the Northman, but yes, that does happen, and you're just like. Mm-hmm. But, bruh, I don't care. Look, honestly, the period, but at least I can make a joke. It's like, oh well, her pussy was in my face. What the fuck do you joke about when an old man got shit on your face and he's old? That shit probably smells like oatmeal and prunes and activity. Oh my or god, <laughs> that's real. was crazy running around the house naked and crawling on her knees and would you mind getting in the oven oh, fuck you <laughs> that's one thing M. Night can make creepy people if I don't give nothing else of a compliment he can make creepy people I'll give him that too yeah creepy ass old folks creepy ass uh, mental person <laughs> and Adrian Brody <sighs> I see dead people 
okay, we'll, we'll stop seeing him and go to sleep, motherfucker. <laughs> With uh, Bruce Willis when, you know, poor guy. I thought he, I thought he was just grumpy and just being lazy, but now I'm just like, God damn, like, that's sad. I feel bad for poking fun at his awful movies. I mean, they're still bad, but, you know, still. Look, Bruce Willis makes the crappy movies entertaining, at least. Yeah. But it's Bruce Willis. In, but in that, how do you have a cool concept and then kind of get lazy in the execution? Like, eh, whatever. I'm gonna get another job anyways. Like, no. I would start threatening. If you don't make a really good movie next time, I'm gonna stop hiring you. Yeah. That's what's gonna I, happen to you that night. I bet you then he'll make a movie where he falls up on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, or, like, hey, he made Last Airbender and After Earth and he came back making Split. And people were like, there's still hope for good M. Night Shyamalan stuff. And then we get oh, it. You know, you don't want to be like Josh Trank who made Fan Force shit. He's literally never worked after that movie. No, he's only, he's literally only made one good movie, Chronicle, and that's it. Fan Force of course. And his recent one, Capone, that one sucked. That was, and that was also Re- Max Re- Landis' only good movie. He fucking Re- sucks. I he hate Max Landis. Capone. Yeah, I don't, I didn't like it. I thought uh, it was very bad. I fucking hate oh, Max Landis. Because I, I think I mentioned it once. I was like, oh, I haven't seen this. And Britt was like, you're not going to watch it, are you? I'm like, why? What's wrong? And he told me about the sword without spoiling. I was like, oh, wait, that's what the movie we focus on? I don't want to see this just dude lose his shit because he got, you know, dick sickness, syphilis. Like, the fuck? Hell no. No. Who the fuck thinks about Capone and thinks about syphilis? No. I, I didn't see it, but I will say, um, I, I'm just gonna say real quick, I fucking hate Max Landis. I just don't like him. I don't like his stupid ass face. I don't like, I don't like his hair. I don't like his fucking lisp. I don't like any of it. Was I surprised when I heard he was a sexual assaulter? No, sir, I was not. In all honesty, kind of suspected it. He he seemed the Dude, type. I, he looks I like want, one. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that when I first came out, but I'm like, yeah, no, because I don't want to upset him and get him into a rage. But I, but I kind of knew. <laughs> All honesty, when I, it was kind of like it was just like uh, it was just like you know, I was like, not, I'm not surprised like, at all. Because I like him after he wrote that Superman story, and he just. In interviews, oh, he, just, he just had a, a like a aura about him, like he was a cocky little shit. Yeah, he's a fucking douchebag. That's why I don't. That's why I don't like him. He had like that douchebag energy. Like he looks like a Down syndrome version of Michael Phelps's brother. <laughs> he, he literally does. <laughs> oh god. He looks like the hipster version of his dad, and who's actually a good filmmaker, John Landis, who made American Werewolf in London. Which is an amazing yeah. movie. John Landis, God, I'm sorry, John. That's your sign. We shouldn't. We shouldn't be talking about you. I apologize. Ugh. Anyway, you know, you did Home Alone. Well, you, you produced Home Alone. He also did Thriller and Black and White. Black or White with Michael Jackson. So, I'm sorry, but your son is a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I. Like I'm, I I read his comic too, uh, the one about the adventures, which was okay, but I was just like, Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna read American Alien. Don't bother. Cause I'm like, you Don't know, fu- I'm like, you know what? Fuck this guy. <laughs> it's one of those cases where cancel culture. I'm like, you know what? Fuck him. <laughs> like I'm not. Gonna... <laughs> Oh, I haven't either. I, I, I don't want to either. He's, it's not one I like to focus a lot of energy on. No. But, but back on stuff that makes us happy. Yeah. Yes, back on things that make me happy. Um, let's see. Um, She-Hulk. <laughs> oh, God damn. Jacob, fuck you. <laughs> Well, um, I only saw the I only I only saw the Daredevil episode, which I only saw the Daredevil one because I'm like you know that's that's what I came for. That's great. That's all you fucking need. Yep. If you care about that Hulk, don't watch it. If you care about Hulk, don't watch this abortion of a show. 
It is. It is an abortion. I'm sorry. Damn. I'm sorry. I thought it looked mediocre. No, it's worse than mediocre. <laughs> it's asshole juice. Oh, God. Mm. Green asshole juice. Oh, God. Please stop. <laughs> like, Sh- Shrek was having a-, a heavy cycle if he was a woman. Like, Fiona or something. I don't know. Yep. Um, We did talk about um we did talk we were talking about how much we love daredevil the show as well yes so, masterpiece um, yeah yes th- that that th- all of that because you know daredevil is just a uh a work of art if you ask me i'm, I'm not even sorry for saying it it's a fact yes it's not an opinion it's a fact <laughs> even, even like the second season, the second season still, you can still find stuff about the about that you like that's really really good. Oh, season two is still really good, despite the end being uh, just feeling completely forced in. They should have just stuck with the Punisher yeah. story. Then we could have gotten another masterpiece, but still great stuff in season two. Yeah, yeah, one and made, three are like phenomenal. Oh yeah, they made up for for season three. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I I think I already know where we are about this, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Who's hoping that he goes back to red in Daredevil Reborn? I'm hoping. I am. Hate his yellow red suit. I mean, like, I don't mind the yellow suit. I don't have issues with it like you guys do, but, you know, I'm like, yeah, red's better. Yeah, it, it grows on me in the sense of I can tolerate it because it's Charlie Cox, but this better not be permanent. No. If it's like his main suit, please no. I've never been a fan of the yellow and red suit anyway. It's yeah. like, no, oh, God, please no! No! Like, you know what? Like, no! Uh, I'd rather, look, I'd rather he be in the, the red pimp suit that Britain hates. Oh, my God. The yellow one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even bring that up. I'd rather he wear that shit than to wear this. But I am kind of, even though, like, his, his jokes were okay. Yeah. I was happy to see him generally, genuinely happy. Because yeah. after the shit he went through in his own show, I'm like, he needs to just let him be happy just a little bit. <laughs> he needs to smile makes, more. And it, makes, and it makes sense for his arc. And, like, the uh, wits that... Because Daredevil has always been winning at comics. Like, that line he gets, like, oh, my ass remains up. Well, like, mm-hmm. I like that. I was like, yeah, that was fine. Like, Daredevil has always been winning at comics. And plus, can we let Matt Murdock be happy? Please. He's been through a lot of shit, all right? I'm like... Right, literally, like, he goes through more shit than Spider-Man. I'm like, and he literally... <laughs> He literally, like, like, literally his first line, like, when he's being a lawyer is like, well, we've been lawyers for about seven hours. <laughs> yeah. And I love that even though it wasn't his show, he still dominated her in that courtroom. Like, no, yeah, no, I'm still the best lawyer in Marvel. Fuck that shit. <laughs> he slams the case dramatically. I was like, yes. Matt Murdock, bitch. But, I yeah, like, I, I love, um, I love Matt. I, I love I love Daredevil. I love the show. It's, it's just as as perfect of a Daredevil adaptation as you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. Now the ru- I don't know if it's gonna be exact, but there's a rumor that Spider-Man Four is gonna help set up like like the Daredevil Reborn and Spider-Man Four are gonna intertwine somehow, and that we'll see Daredevil and Spider-Man together. How y'all feel about that? Please, oh, please. I would love that. Spidey team up against Kingpin. Have Jim Stone as a side villain. Please do. Oh my right. God. 90s Spider-Man feel where they teamed up. I, yes. I want to see that at least once. I, I just want that. Oh. I want to see Spider-Man go up against Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. That's my dream. Yes, because he wants it. He's like, bring it. I mean, because yeah, like, Kingpin was originally a Spider-Man villain. Mm-hmm. Before he was a Daredevil and Spider-Man. Villain. Before wacky Frank Miller showed up and turned him into a daredevil villain quite brilliantly, but still. Yeah, but in his defense, he wasn't wacky yet. Well, he wasn't wacky yet. This was pre-wacky uh, Frank Miller. <laughs> he, was a, he was a, how would I say, I would say he's a, 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 like a mad scientist genius at that time in his era. Mm-hmm. Because he, he was on a roll with daredevil, with Batman, so I was like, all right, yeah, cool. But I didn't even know it until I think a few years later that he was actually a Spider-Man villain first before he became a Daredevil. Oh, I, I knew him as a Spider-Man villain first because I watched the 90s cartoon with that awesome uh, theme. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Fuck yeah. 
Clarify real quick. Which one is better as far as the theme? Attack of Spider-Man or 90 Spider-Man? Oh, oh, God. God. Uh, as regards to which one's the most catchy, spectacular Spider-Man. Oh, my but God. Me, which one I like listening to? Uh, the 90s one. I, I listen to the 90s one when I'm writing Nyro. Because, I don't know, there's something about that the guitar that just brings it together. There's just something about it. It's, and the lyrics are simple, but it's not so much the lyrics with that song. It's more of like the impact of it that you know matches Spider-Man with it. Protect yeah. Spider-Man. Shit, I'll have that shit on repeat for 30 minutes, and I'm like, Spectacular, Spectacular Spider-Man. You know, I just want to sing along. Yeah, Spectacular Spider-Man. For some reason, I didn't care for the... Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man theme, but you know it's grown on me over the years. I I really love it now. Yeah. Can't deny that it's catchy as fuck. Oh my god, it is so catchy. Oh. Yeah, once you got that whole thing about him being with women in that show. I remember when he was first watching it, he was like coming to me like, "How is he getting Liz and Mary Jane and Gwen?" And I'm like, I don't know. The spider tech is, I don't know. Because I, I don't know how he gets laid, to be honest. I, I, you know, I actually, Carlton can attest to this, but I had like a breakdown <laughs> during, because of the character, because of the, because of the ca- the character drama in the show of Spectacular Spider-Man. Um, he's, it, it's the episode where he saves Gwen, he's like, you know what, I kind of like Gwen, and then, um, and then, uh, oh damn it, what's her name? Liz Allen shows or Liz Allen shows up. She's like, you know what, Petey? I like you. Kisses him on New Year's. I'm like, fuck, damn it, shit. Yeah, I and I was like texting Carlton, like fucking. I was going all off. <laughs> I was like, God. Brittany, Brittany broke himself because I was like, Brittany, you good? I was like, yeah. they just fucking kissed her. Damn it. <laughs> it was it was it was bad. <laughs> this is how should break down. Matter of fact, to y'all. Who's the best love interest of Spider-Man? Mary Jane. Hmm. 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 But I do love Gwen Stacy and Spectacular Spider-Man. I was really going hard for it. I was like, yes. Uh, I'll have to say Mary Jane. Yeah, Mary. Mary. Barely over Gwen. Like Mary Jane has gone through so much shit with him, but at the same time, you know, Gwen kind of have a sore spot because they retconned that she fucked the Goblin. Oh my god. So, I kind of had a time not thinking about that. Who thought of that shit, even? Ugh. Um, Skrzynski? Oh my god. Oh. Even Dang. though, okay, well... I can't blame him. No, I blame editorial because he didn't want that. He wanted something else in that story, but they forced it on him and he just worked with it. Just like the same guy that fucked, that did that with Spider-Man One More Day, Joe Quesada. Oh my God. (laughs) He's coming to DC as an artist. Oh God, no. He he can be an artist. Just don't have, don't let him have any Oh, an artist. Okay. Okay, yeah. As an artist, yeah, yeah but yeah. writer, no. Because Ben just is leaving. I don't want another Marvel person come over and fucking over shit. I bet he heard. I bet he heard about Quesada. Was like, oh fuck, I'm leaving. Before <laughs> <laughs> this gets bad. I was like, God, it, it's funny. Joe Quesada been talking shit about DC all these years. Now you're coming over. Mm-hmm. Maybe he changed his mind. I don't know. I'm just like, I don't, <sighs> care. I don't give a fuck. You made a, a sucky ass Iron Man story, and you gave me Spider Man one more day. I'm mad at you. Yeah, that that is probably the worst Spider-Man story of all time. Well, I say it is. I hate one more day. Oh my god, terrible. But you know what? Look, when you have a writer that quits and he's got one more issue to, to write, you know you fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like you know what? Nah, I'm cool. Like why don't you just wipe your ass with Spider-Man? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna write Sp- Superman Earth One. And honestly, I prefer that because Superman Earth One is awesome. But I thought Johns did Superman Earth One. Mm. No, he did Batman Earth One. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I still yeah. need to read that. Where for some reason Batman punches Gordon and yeah. Oh it's yeah, like, I, yeah. I remember. I remember. I was texting you before the Batman came out. And I'm like, I don't know why he would punch Gordon, and then he just like sent me that image without context. I'm like. 
okay, he just punched him in the comics. Well, I don't know what this means. <laughs> well, in Earth, 1, in Earth 1, he punched him to get away. Oh, the okay. They were, they were outsmarting him. I'm like, okay, yeah. Thank God Matt Reeves made sense of that shit Johns did. Because when John said it, he's like, there's a reason I haven't done an incontinuity story of Batman. And then he does about the three Jokers. And I'm like, honestly, I kind of wish he didn't do this. I already don't like Johns as a person. But then this is what you, you made us wait five years. And this is what you give us? F- fuck you with a broomstick. <laughs> Though I am still wanting to read his Green Lantern run. I, I want to see what he does with uh, Jon Stewart. I, I ain't supporting nothing with him no more. I gotta, I gotta read the old Green Lantern stories. You know, that were, that were good. That I didn't have yeah. to pay for. Like Black as Night. I got that at work. <laughs> From when I used to work in Goodwill, I got I, someone donated that. It, it was Blackest Night and Brightest Day. I'm like, I gotta get them. It's my first time actually reading it. I finally read it. Well, Kyle, I mean, Kyle's like a white lantern and shit. I'm like, oh, cool. I was actually I was actually rewatching our Justice League episode that we did. You mean the Snyder cut? <laughs> yes. It, it was it was the sober it was the sober cut edition. No, oh, so okay. no worries. I was I was I was yeah. I was still cackling at you guys uh, talking mad shit about um <laughs> about Guy Bull Gardner. Cut. Yeah, don't say his name, please. Oh, okay. Full <laughs> cut. Mm. Bitch ass ginger. So um, I I do I, I thought we could do a a reverse, and I wanted to talk about my appreciation for John Stewart. Yeah. Because He's the best in my eyes. He I don't is. Care. He is my favorite Green Lantern. I, I know a lot of people like Hal Jordan, and that that is fine. But John Stewart, he's just he just hits different, you know. See, he's I a like lot them, cooler. I like them both on the same level. But oh, see, if nothing else, you've got to give Snyder credit for this. He wanted to put John Stewart in the, in the Snyder cut. I would have loved oh, that. Yeah. I've, he put yeah. Martian Manhunter in there. I'm like, oh, we'll love Martian yeah, Manhunter. But, but the old Warner Brothers regime said no. But here's the thing that's going to piss off Jeff Johns because, you know, he's doing that show that's taking forever to get off. Yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard I've heard whispers. The new regime wants to do something with Snyder's Jon Stewart. So, yeah. And being that a certain individual may or may not appear in Black Adam, confirming Snyder's stuff to basically be back. I have a feeling we're going to see John, more of John Stewart, but from what the rumors are, they want to do John Stewart and Hal Jordan together. Um, where, like, I think Hal is, like, training John, or they've been partners for a minute. So it's like a team up, like, body cop type thing. Mm-hmm. And look, as long as John Stewart is in it, do whatever the fuck you want. I wonder who they'd, I wonder who they'd recast as, as Hal Jordan. I'm curious. I am. Not because I don't like Ryan, but like I don't want. I'm I'm kind of tired of hearing that fan cast. You could bring back Ryan Reynolds. No, keep him as Deadpool. No. Yeah, I think else. he's better as Deadpool because that Green Lantern movie is just, who oh boy. Yeah, we don't discuss that here. Well, cast but, film, but pretty terrible. Most besides from that. Yeah. So besides that, Wonder Woman three, the script has been written for that. They're still working on the Black Canary show. Um, Jonathan, what else? What else is coming up? Oh, a lot of Marvel's movies have been delayed. Yeah, I heard <laughs> about that. Blade, Fantastic Four, Deadpool three, Avengers. That might actually be a good thing. We don't want to rush them out. That that's always a. Uh... Well, I can believe Especially that. Blade. Yeah, Blade. No, they're delaying that shit because they can't get their shit together with that one. They have no excuse. Yeah. Future. It's, it should be that hard making a Blade movie. It just get a black guy. You got Mahershala Ali, great actor. That that kind of came out wrong. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> that that didn't come out right. There you go. Remember that shit. That that kind of came out bad. That that was unexpected. That that didn't get get Mahershala Ali and give him like some like 
just make like a good story about him kicking vampire ass, like Look, you know. You, me, and Jacob, all three of us could write a better Blade movie because we already got the foundation of it. Balance between horror and action. No stupid ass jokes. Make nope. it rated R. And there you go. And make it longer than ninety fucking minutes. <laughs> yeah, you get Mahershala Ali. Perfect choice for great Blade. actor. So I think Wesley Snipes is perfect as Blade, but Mahershala Ali. Perfect choice. Great Wesley choice when you don't got uh, Wesley Snipes. Because Wesley Snipes even said, oh yeah, I approve of the casting. He's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's even like... he said, like, yeah, he's going to be great. <laughs> if they don't make it rated R, then I won't be excited for it. Because Blade just... is a character that has to be rated R. I'm just saying. And if y'all are willing to have Deadpool, the rated R ones, Logan, on Disney Plus being in this radar format, y'all don't have an excuse anymore to not have Blade be rated R. Like, who would you have to direct uh, the Blade movie? A black guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a black guy? Okay. <laughs> you, get a black guy, you get a black guy, you get a black director, and there you got a Blade movie. <laughs> it, it rolls back around. <laughs> yeah, it rolls back around. You should have saw it coming. Damn it. <laughs> I don't look. Because the fact that the director left and they had to rewrite the whole thing because it only came out as 90 pages. Oh my god. Like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Like, Bro, I could come up with a good Blade movie. Are you, are you doing much? I think so. you did. Once you, was you was talking to me about Blade once. Of, of a story you would do. I'm like, yeah, see, right there. That should be the movie. I'd be... I'd, 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 I, still, I still actually like that idea. I'd, I'd write that shit. Like, pay me, Marvel. I'll write it. How can you fuck then, up a Blade movie? So simple. And, oh, fact, action. Look, we were talking about who, who would do it. I just watched Werewolf... I can't say the last name. Oh, uh, Werewolf by uh, Night? Yeah. Oh, you saw that? I, I did. Wasn't that shit amazing? It was okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was okay. Okay, maybe, maybe not amazing, but I really enjoyed it. It was better than what I thought. I'll give it that. It was better than what I thought it was going to be. It, it, it made me it was promising if you get that guy who has done the the music for the Batman and the Star yeah. Wars yeah him if you get him to do Blade then I'll get excited honestly if my the Kino directing a Blade movie after seeing World by Night I'd be down for that yeah yeah please I'd be like alright cool and don't rely on the fucking CGI cause that's why that's what keeps me from saying that it was awesome the CGI was wonky I'm like look you need to pay these fucking views. These well, I kind of thought it was intentionally hammy, but that that's just me. I, I could just be, that, you know. But that doesn't help their case. That just makes it worse. So you're intentionally making it look like shit. Like, fuck you. I didn't think of it. You know what, never mind. Y'all I'm not going to argue with you on this. Y'all, y'all made too much money for the CGI to be shit. I, I really liked Man-Thing, though. He looked great. Yeah, I will admit. I was having fun when I saw Man-Thing. I was like, all right, cool. Cool. All right, I can get behind that. The werewolf, the, cool, the blood, I'll admit, I was not ready for that. For Marvel, I was like, oh. But it gave me hope. I'm like, maybe Disney will grow a set of balls and uh, take a few things farther, hopefully. Right? Because I just started to think that when they were handling the whole uh, LGBT kiss in the Eternals and the stuff that was going on in Miss Marvel. So or like, okay, maybe they'll take Spidey. a chance now. Or Spidey yeah. and Goblin fighting it. I was like, okay, there's hope. For some brutality. Yeah, when Spider Man did a WWE power bomb to Goblin. I'm like, there's hope. I was like, please God, just just grow up, boss. Fuck the kids. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, them kids. Fuck the kids. <laughs> please please Damn. please the real fans of Mar. Please us, the real fans. I know I know Jordan will be like, This is violent, but look, Jordan will love you, but right now, fuck the kids. Yeah. <laughs> fuck them kids. Uh jeez. Oh god, but I uh, see. I'm trying to think of anything else. No, other than that, as far as Marvel, I don't know what else is coming out. Except, uh, oh, Secret Invasion. Uh, Secret Invasion. No. I'm like I, I'm trying to take a break from MCU right now. I, I did cheat a little with Werewolf by Night, but I'm like, you know what? I love werewolves, and this actually looks like a lot of fun. So I'm gonna watch it. I really enjoyed myself. Well, uh, Secret, Secret Invasion looks like it's gonna be very Winter Soldier like. So I'm like, all right, cool. Thank you. I need that. Something a little bit more grounded. That's not so. You know, we need more. 
we need more MCU films like Winter Soldier in regards to being like grounded and realistic, immature. Very much. Yeah, so, I've. Mm. Mm. See, Where would my night? The trailer is what ruined it for me. I almost didn't give a chance because of the trailer. But I was like, you know what? They're going to be talking about this. I know Britain's going to be watching this just because he likes werewolves. Let me watch it. It's only like an hour. But I was about to say, well, you know me. I'm a freaking whore for werewolves. So, you know, I'm like, I won't watch this. You have a boner for them. <laughs> Your teeth are going to Twilight. Yeah. <laughs> um... I will admit it is a little hammy in some parts, but I, I kind of thought, I'm like, you know, it is the it is kind of a tribute to the old Universal monster movies, so it's kind of part of the bag. But yeah, it is a little hammy in parts, and some of the CGI is like, eh. I liked it was I, I liked it was grittier than some of the other Marvel stuff, like some limbs yeah. came off and it was bloodier. All that fun like, stuff. Someone broke that slit, and I'm like, oh, and I didn't cut away from it. Y'all are taking advantage of the black and white filter. Big time. But, um, Jacob, have you seen Werewolf by Night yet? Oh, yeah, I already told you I asked it. Oh. Oh, yeah, we talked about that yesterday. That's a yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way better than I expected it to be. Oh, I God. A bit, but I wasn't excited for it. I was like, eh, whatever. It's just another thing that MCU's doing. But now I'm I going really back to my... Now I am going back to my break from the MCU for right now. I'm f- stop teasing me, Marvel. Stop it. Stop just right now. Just stop teasing me. I need me. to catch up on Andor because I haven't seen it yet. Oh my gosh, Andor is fantastic so far. I am enjoying myself. Really? Oh yes. I, I've been hearing about it. I'm like, okay. I liked Obi Wan. Yeah, you know, it wasn't perfect, but I like the, the the complaints about it were stupid. Like, look, it gave me what I wanted. It's, it's rewatchable. I wanted it's more episodes, personally speaking. But that's well, just sorry, I'll, I'll give Andor a chance, and hopefully it's, you know, what I've been hearing about. It. People are saying it's very Jane, uh, uh, Jason Warren type. Oh, it's fantastic. It's basically what Rogue One should have been. Yeah, fuck that. Oh, you don't like Rogue One? I hated it. I don't. I don't hate it. I. I thought it was. I thought it was all right. And then the last like forty fought like the third act is great. Yeah, it's 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 like how Britain feels about Matrix. That's how I feel about Rogue One. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Never forgive you for that shit. Like I've gotten a lot of shit for not liking Rogue One. <laughs> I like. But the third act makes it worth it. Just the third act alone, with how they tie it with Darth Vader and and Princess Leia, for that is why I think okay, it's better than Sky the Rise of Skywalker. That's for damn sure. Oh, oh well, I, I think anything's that. better than it's that better. movie. <laughs> it's better than that movie. I will say oh, that. Oh jeez. Well, I, I think that's the rest. I think that's the best we can do right now. <laughs> that's, I think that's all we got for today. Um, anything else to talk about? But uh, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. This uh, this uh, this was well worth the wait. Indeed. Um. Oh yeah, my pick. So I thought about this because I was kind of I kind of had this happen on short notice. But um, for our last one, I'm gonna do the gift from Joel Edgerton. And yes, it is a horror movie. The it gift. It's a psychological thriller, so it counts. I gotta look that up. It sounds so familiar. Uh, Jacob, what do you think of this? You said the gift. The gift, yes. I hate to disappoint, oh. but I haven't seen it. You haven't seen the gift? Oh, damn it! I remember. Look, I'm Sorry. looking up right now. I'm looking up right now. I remember it. Oh. Yeah, it's not um. Like God damn it! All right, pulling out the. Okay. Damn. I didn't realize it was this old though. Two thousand one. Uh. Not that was uh damn it. All right, you know what? I'm gonna go with the cliched boys. You've seen Halloween, haven't you? Halloween. I'm talking. I'm talking to Jacob. You have seen the original Halloween. I am hoping you have. Yes. Yes, I have. Okay, let's just talk about that. Uh, Carlton, you want to come back for next week? Uh, I know you probably want to talk about Halloween too. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what we'll do then. Halloween. I'm like. All right, if anything else just goes out the window, 
John Carpenter's Halloween. That that's how we'll end this. <laughs> yeah, let's go out with a bang. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, Britain. Which 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 gift movie are you talking about? The Sam Raimi one or Joel Edgerton? Uh, the Joel Edgerton one. Oh yeah, I haven't seen that one. Oh damn it. Well, we can talk about it some other time. Halloween. Oh. Made up my mind. Not changing it. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Changed my mind once. I'm not changing it again. Oh no, keep it. Yes, Halloween. All right, Halloween it is. We'll get Carl tonight. The, uh, the, the the original one. Yep, the original one. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> hey. Uh, huh. all right, Jacob. You wanna uh, set us off here? Oh yes. This has been yet another episode of Bridge Jake Go to the Movies. Uh, to our guest Carlton, as always, thanks for coming on. As always, my pleasure. And can't wait to bring you on for next uh, next week for Halloween. To be fair. Anyways, I have been Jacob. And I've been Britain. And what does he say, Britain? We do it for the love of the movies. Yes, we do. Alright, take care, everyone. Goodbye.